albatross around the egg. No more like a millstone. A plumbing stone, by God. Damn them all. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Heart of Horror. I'm one of your hosts, Bo. With me, as always, the the lady of letters now. A literary luminary. <laughs> Uh, a champion of the uh, the the authorial underdog, uh, Kay yeah. Pollock. So, <laughs> since we last recorded, you have a whole new show you are doing now. Yeah, it hasn't officially started. Social media started. That's up and running. Um, just you know, create buzz. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, I get it. Marketing, yeah. the thing I right? never do. Oh god, like yeah, marketing is a and i'm like trying to do different at least like some sort of output every day and i'm just like Ugh. <laughs> i have no time i mean i have to do my makeup like every day like full on and i have to like even if it's just for, like the five minutes it takes for me to do like a minute reel because there's always so many outtakes where i've like oh, i can't talk kind of thing <laughs> like um or like i say the title of the book wrong or something you know? i'm like um and then i have to take it all off again because you know it's late and i'm knackered and need to go to bed and you know it's just like marketing is just such a such a bane and I feel like unless that is your only thing that you have to do like that's your job that's your full-time thing like I feel like anyone has to self-market it's just like so sick of it within about two minutes um but it's worthwhile to to see like the interaction and like the feedback and stuff so you know we move but um but yeah no it's a it's a, a new podcast about um indie authors and their books and basically there'll be like two episodes a month one will be a review episode of a book and then the next one will be an interview with the author um so that's first episode is going to be dropping in the next shit two weeks <laughs> um so yeah um it's called kate anjou's book reviews ah uh, um, look for it wherever you get your finer podcasts about books yeah or just Anjou, podcasts in general. It doesn't have to yeah, be just books. I'll be sharing it around. So, yeah, no, like, um, Anjou is my middle name. Um, and it rhymes with reviews. So <laughs> Yeah. I, I was wondering. I, I didn't know that was your middle name or if you had told me I'd forgotten. Uh, because no, I put, I'm like, a little feeble. kind of... <laughs> I put like a little explanation up on the Facebook thing, but I don't think anyone like, cause my, my Instagram handle, my personal one is K on 37 anyway. Okay. So like, I figure anyone who follows me on Instagram, like they'll understand that it's some sort of, even if they assume it's my last name, I'm not mad at that because one of the reasons why I have Anjou on Instagram and things is to remain a little bit of like, have a little bit of, um, what's the word? Uh, privacy. Anonymous. Anonymous. Yeah. Like, anonymous. Yeah, exactly. Um, and stuff so like you know i don't i don't really mind but like for the people on facebook who know me as kate pollock like <laughs> you know they're like huh what's, what's that about you just trying to sound poncy um so i put like a little kind of like thing about it saying by the way because uh I, there was i sort of <laughs> said like i thought kate on G's book reviews sounds better than kate pollock's that's a load of book bollocks but oh that's pretty good though but apparently everyone prefers that name, so I guess fuck me, right? Yeah, Kate Pollock's <laughs> book bollocks would be yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, just in case anyone is wondering, Anjou is spelled like the place in France, so A-N-J-O-U. I um, would recommend, yeah. if you haven't, uh, I I just read recently a anthology collection called bad dolls from uh an author Ooh. named rachel harrison okay it's, it's four stories that are more twilight zoney than they are like outright horror oh my podcast literally like i have got a bunch of fantasy and horror stuff because i've teamed up with this publication house called quill and crow mm -hmm. but i'm not exclusive to them either and it is open all genres it just happens to be I know a lot of fantasy and horror authors um, and that happens to just be what, what I'll be rolling out for the most part, but I am open to any kind of author. Yeah. I would uh, give her a, a try and see if you like, yeah. I mean, just read the, read the book and then, uh, but I, I think she would be somebody that was, you know, open to that kind of, of uh, kind of situation of dropping nice. in and having a conversation. Cause 
Um, and I think it would be interesting uh, as I was reading it. It's very, it's very female centric. Like all the stories are about sort of the female experience and in, in yeah. various scenarios. And it was really uh-huh. interesting. It was, it was, uh, um, you know, I had my favorite, like with any anthology, right? Whether it's book or movie or whatever, there are some that, that really mm. land and there are some that don't, but there was one called Goblin. Oh, okay. That was about <laughs> an app that you downloaded and it was like this digital goblin that would scold you if you ate too much. <laughs> Need me one of them. And except in the case of the main character of this story, it was a literal goblin. And the story was very much about, you know, the eating disorders and the unrealistic expectations of how women look and, mm-hmm. you know, that, that cycle of, uh, you know, being an average build person and feeling too fat or too thin or, you know, the, yeah, yeah. That's not the right shape or. Right. And so it was, uh, but it was, it was, it was good. It was like that story in particular, I thought, uh, was really, you know, fun and interesting and, and self-aware and, uh, nice. yeah. So a couple, eh, not so much, but that one in particular, I really that one liked. in particular. Yeah. I'll, um, yeah, I'll definitely check that out for sure. That sounds really interesting. Like, yeah, I'm not normally one for like anthologies, but I've picked up on a few lately that have actually been really good. So I think like the fact that it's like four stories as opposed to like, I think it's because like, the, like the, okay, so like, for example, Stephen King's mm-hmm. anthologies, like they always have like 10 of them, right, <laughs> like right, 10 right. stories in there. And like, it can be like a bit like, I don't know, like sometimes I I like that, there's like a bunch that I don't even remember because it's just like, I don't know it's just so like there's so much going on and different stories and different things whereas if there's only like four or something three or four then that's like a good number because like you're more it, you can kind of still get a lot of story from it as well mm-hmm. so yeah I yeah. right I I could tell you something about all four of these stories but you're right if I you know read Night Shift or something from Stephen King there is going to be some that I'm like, oh, I even remember that that story was in there, uh, you know. And there is always yeah. a, it, when, when, especially when you're dealing with, you know, something that collects like fifteen, twenty stories. Yeah, there's always a couple that are like, I this is a stinker. Like this isn't even just a down note. This is legit bad. Yeah, this is just not a or great like story. It's, or it's just not even really like a complete story. It's more of like a thought process. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, you right. know, it's like three pages long or something and i'm like i don't i don't understand what's just happened and i'm not sure that i care <laughs> <laughs> right, right uh but we're not here to talk about books that that's no, for smart not. people um and <laughs> and we don't take that approach with, with this show uh so no, tonight we're definitely not <laughs> i mean yes we do sorry <laughs> we're gonna talk Look, nothing i do can be called smart at best, listen. Are you a teacher? You well, a teacher? yeah, yeah, but I don't record that. Uh, which, uh, thank goodness. Um, <laughs> oh man, yeah, 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 like, boy, we we had a long break. The kids come back and they're just knuckleheads. Like they have forgotten <laughs> how to act like a human being around other people and so forth. And yeah, uh, and they're freshmen to begin with. They're barely human as it is. Oh, definitely not. Especially the males. Like, oh. No. Forget about it. They're basically monkeys. I yeah. I had a conversation with a kid the other, like just yesterday, where he was talking about how he got in trouble because the way he put it was somebody snitched because me and another guy were about to fight, and somebody told the a teacher, and I was like, you understand how dumb it is to get in a fight at school, right? And he was like, well, but what if no one sees you? I was like. When in the history of ever has there been a fight at school that did not draw a crowd of other kids yeah, hooting 100%. and hollering and yeah. Exactly. And also as well, now we have phones with cameras on them. Like right. I'm amazed that, that shit wasn't on the internet by fucking second period. You yeah. Know? <laughs> and and this is on the heels of Wednesday. There was a fight in the bathroom of uh the, the boys' bathroom right next to my classroom 
So it was one of those things where one of the teachers runs in. It's like, there's a fight in the boys' room. And so, like, I have to truck out of the room and go in there. Well, what do you have to go see? Why can't that teacher go sit, deal with it? Well, if, a female teacher, for one. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, and, okay. and also, she's just not that big. And <laughs> a couple of guys, if they're actually coming to blows, like, she could yeah, get hurt, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah, and, no, But by the time I show up... The uh, SRO, which is the uh, sort of police officer on campus, has already I'm, shown up. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we've got like two or three. Look, we live in a world where there's a school shooting in America uh, about once a week. So there are cops. I mean, with... yeah. No, no, no. I get it. I yeah. get it. I just thought such a f- literal foreign concept. I, I, right. I know. I know. It's It's nuts. And anyway... But so the SRO has already shown up and has sprayed pepper spray. <gasps> and You're so kidding, No. Right, well, but you know, that's kinda I guess what they're trained to do. I didn't know that was a thing either, but I do know that it'll clean out the sinuses pretty good. <laughs> so Right? Oh my god. Yeah. They're just, just being hormonal dickheads. They don't need pepper sprayed. Wow. Yeah, apparently one kid got it pretty good. If I was their parent, I would be that parent and be like, I don't give a shit what they're doing. You do not have to spray my fucking kid. Yeah, it's, it's, I felt really bad for the kid. And also one of the administrators was, uh, was in there to try to break it up. And he, he got a face full as well. Oh my God. And, um, but, <laughs> and yeah. had gone, uh, had gone oh, to his shit. office across the hall, which had a sink in it and started uh-huh. to, you know, like rinse out his eyes. Yeah. Because no one had told him like, oh, that activates the pepper spray, so don't do that. Oh, does it? Yes. Oh and shit. and so he's having a bad time of it until somebody finally tells him, like, no, 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 you've got to use like baby shampoo and and basically rinse your face and eyes with that to to get the pepper do spray. Do they have that on campus? Oh sure. Oh, okay. So, I mean, everybody at the end of the day was fine, you know, because it's all, you know, like, like pepper spray is a real pain in the ass, but it's not. It, it, I wouldn't know. Uh, but like <laughs> all of us are coughing on the English hallway and everything because the pepper spray is just in the air. And it was, it was fucking nuts. I haven't really That's talked about it really since, uh, since it happened, but yeah, that was, That's that was crazy. crazy. And we were. Like, our classes were in the theater for some registration stuff. Uh-huh. And so, apparently, there was another fight in the girls' room <laughs> later that day and that we totally <laughs> missed. And I was telling my across the... the version. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I missed that one. And then uh, I, I was telling my neighbor across the hall, the one who had originally brought in, like, call an admin, there's a fight in the boys' room. Um but I was like, man, we, we're out of the hallway for a day, and it just goes to shit. <laughs> like, we are the glue holding together the, you know, we are the thin blue line yeah. between anarchy and, and order, apparently, in the English hallway. Uh, uh, English, English, uh, English fucking department be crazy. It, I was going to say yeah. English kids be crazy, but then I realized that just makes it sound like kids in my country. Right. <laughs> like. They fight, but our teachers don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's They're what I... Like, well, you're an idiot for getting a black eye. Sit the fuck down. And that, <laughs> that's why I told the kid yesterday, I was like, do you understand that the only way to have a fight that doesn't involve you getting in trouble is to do it off of campus? Yeah. Like, go go somewhere else and then beat the shit out of each other. Who cares? But, yeah, who cares? Uh, okay. Just yeah. don't do it in school. Oh, well. yeah. I didn't think about that. I'm like, yeah, I know, because you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> you're a fucking idiot. You haven't had your fucking fucking lobe developed fully yet. Right. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> they're mushy brain kids to begin with. Be- yeah, yeah, because they, like you said, they're teenagers and their brains are still like the the decision making part of their brains doesn't work it's right just, yet. No, it's not. And and there are some kids who are incredibly mature and together, and I I love them so much. But yeah, I mean, the fully half of them are just like you are, th- you are doing the dumbest shit. <laughs> like all of the kids that are just like, well, I'm gonna fail this class, and so who cares? It's like you know, you don't graduate, right? If you don't pass this class in some way, it just means yeah. you get to take it again. Yeah, like this is you're not winning 
here. That you're not like <laughs> right. sticking it to the man. Yeah. Like there's not there's not any of that. They're just you're fucking yourself over. You get this right? right. Yeah, but no, but you're just fucking yourself over. Right. You no, in you this scenario, you are the man. Over. Yeah, that is being fucked. Yeah, over. exactly, exactly. Right. Yeah. No, kids are dumb. Kids are so dumb. Mm. But uh, mm. what was the point of all that? Oh yeah, yeah. So we're uh, so th- this episode. No right. <laughs> uh, we were talking about uh, the concept of uh, obsession, which we'll get to in a moment, and the film uh, Black Swan. Yeah. Or B Swan, as the kids call it. Oh, don't stop it. <laughs> they don't stop it. No one could. They don't fucking know it exists because they're all fucking. Right. Mo- most of the kids. <laughs> yeah, the, the kids that I deal with were, you know, one or two when Black Swan came out. Oh, don't. Yeah, I know, right? No. That that movie's twenty ten. No, and... my friend told me the other day. So I, so um, I think I've probably said it before. I used to work at a cinema, mm-hmm. and classically, the cinema tends to hire teenagers and early twenties peoples. Oh, sure. sure. Um, and unless you're a manager or something, <clears throat> but I ended up making friends with a bunch of people ten years younger than me um, because I apparently have the mentality of a twenty-two year old, and. Um, Anyway, so one of them is like now one of my best mates. And she told me the other day, I literally, I almost threw my drink at her. Um, She told me the other day that she was only 17 when Ava was born, when my daughter was born. She was 17. Mm. And to me, that seems like last week. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So I'm just like, Jesus Christ, like, (laughs) like <laughs> i'm like this creepy older because i'm 36 in february <laughs> i know it, it goes by so fast and uh, i'm just like ew, like am i some sort of weird groomer like creepy older friend you know <laughs> he just hangs around with hey cool kids what's going on you know? <laughs> hey fellow hell hey fellow students uh i mean <laughs> Keep in What's mind, <laughs> you're talking to a 50 year old who hangs around with teenagers all day. Um, you get paid for it. I do get paid for it. I oh, here's another thing I have to tell you real quick. Speaking of being old, um, right? Oh, cool. I uh, I told <laughs> uh, what the kids were complaining about the fact that I was giving them you know this quiz. They did we we weren't able to give them a midterm because there was a tornado that hit and et cetera et cetera. <laughs> um. Oh my god, America is just fucking crazy. It's a a collection of natural and unnatural disasters all rubbing <laughs> up against each other. But in this case, we we weren't able to give a full midterm, but I was like, hey, we're going to do this little mini midterm because there's some data I want to gather. Like, I want to know where you are. Mm. Um, you know, the reason that I give you a midterm isn't just to punish you and give you a long <laughs> test. It's so that we know if you're learning shit. Mm-hmm. And so I gave him a, a little bit of that, and one of the kids in my first period class says, um, "You know, nobody is giving us a quiz on the Monday after we get back." And I said, "I actually, that's not true because uh, Sarah across the hall is also giving her kids the same quiz." Mm-hmm. And they said, "Well, okay, so just the two of you." And I said, "Yeah, but that's because we're the coolest." <laughs> and. <laughs> Then to prove me wrong, oh no! I this kid coming. writes an essay about how I am not the coolest teacher, <gasps> and I got to tell you, Kate, <gasps> it was perfect form. It was like here's my topic sentence, here's my evidence, uh, uh, and I was like, ha ha! <laughs> Even though you think you're fucking me, you have actually learned how to write an essay properly. That's fucking though amazing. Were... That's not where I thought you were going with no. that, and that is so so good. Yeah, and I'm actually going to use it as an example of doing rebuttals and counterclaims. Yeah, uh, when we when we do <gasps> some other work, he's going to be so mad at you. No, I already told him. I was like, "Hey, is you it okay if I fight? use it?" Uh, yeah, he said absolutely, and like we that's we, hilarious. I tell him all the time that he is my nemesis. <laughs> and i love that shit from teachers like my i had a french teacher like that he was exactly kind of your energy it was he was so great Shout yeah out mr pike uh so yeah we have a good time and and it, the other day he was like uh you know I'm, i would be so much happier if i had a different english teacher 
And he didn't mean it. He was just saying. <laughs> yeah, it. yeah. He's just been a dickhead. Yeah. yeah. And I said, well, yeah. you have to remember that there can be no Joker without the Batman, sir. And that <gasps> is our relationship to one another. Oh, I love that. Did he love that? Uh, Did yeah, he love that yeah, you yeah, had yeah. that reference? Uh, but it was so funny they because. Know that you were like a movie podcaster and shit. Did they know this stuff mm-mm, about you? Mm-mm. No, 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 no. I, because of the crazy shit I say on the, on the oh, podcast. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah, they would look it up and they would like put on blast for sure. Right, right. Or worse yet, like. Sh- so l- sh- yeah, right. Give it to their parents. Like, look, here's, yeah. here's what my English teacher says about abortion. Um, <laughs> so, so no, no, no. I, I have. No, but then they'll just hear your, they'll just hear your Doug Bradley voice. And then all is forgiven. Right. Well, that, that's true. Or the the Defoe impression. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So no, I, <laughs> I I kind of have a weird work pseudonym where I go by my actual name there as opposed to Bo, which is a nickname. And what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what? yeah, that is not what appears on my birth certificate. What? Yeah. I. What? Uh huh. God, I've known you for how long? Well, it's and I never knew this. But wow. it's not something that comes up because I don't go by you know my proper name anywhere except school. Yeah. And so if they look me up, they don't get any results. You know, and so uh, wow. it's yeah, it works out. That's yeah. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. I've mm-hmm. I've mentioned that I've had movies made and things like that, and they uh, they have searched and not found anything, so oh, nice. so far so good. The system works. The system works. Right. You know. Wow. And, I did not know that. Oh, that's awesome. So, and if they, if they ever come, you know, up with something, and, and technically, because I'm not using, like, school grounds or property or anything like no, that, no, like, I can't course. really You're get in trouble for hobby. anything. Jesus. Right. But, you know, it would still make life more difficult if they were like, hey, I was listening to this podcast you were on, and you were, <laughs> you know, saying this crazy shit about, you know, insert incendiary topic here. Um, but yeah. yeah. So anyway, so Black Swan. Um, yeah. Sure. B- before we jump into that, though, let's okay. talk about uh, haunted romance. Oh, right, right. So this is. So I decided that I was going to go. You know, I sent you that screenshot. Mm-hmm. I decided I was going to go with that because it was a nice little follow up from last episodes where we kind of. It's the same show. Mm-hmm. So last time we talked about um, this woman, Amethyst Realm. <laughs> um, <laughs> just it sounds like she is dancing on a pole. Like it's just <laughs> crystal. Um, <laughs> Everybody actually... enjoy the Guns and Roses. Next up, Amethyst Realm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very that. Um, yeah, no. So I, um, I just happened to come across on instagram it was just like literally the screenshot that i sent you it was just this headline and i was like oh all right not not really ghosts Mm -hmm. but there is enough weirdness here and also there are a lot of similarities to things like what amethyst realm was saying in the way that they communicate and stuff Mm -hmm. so this (laughs) one This one um, is about a woman, an American woman, called Emanuela Rose, (laughs) who is dating an alien and wants him to propose. So, I've got this here. She's proposing or the alien's proposing? Well, technically the alien's proposing. Okay. But apparently he doesn't really understand human customs. Okay. So he keeps getting it wrong. Okay. Right. I'll get there. So, Emanuela Rose. <clears throat> Sorry. It's okay. It's just making me laugh because you'll find out in a minute. Emanuela Rose claims she first met her boyfriend when a UFO appeared outside her window to abduct her. Once on board, she met five aliens, one of which began visiting her frequently and has since become her lover. She's been dating him for over a year and is ready to, for him to pop the question. 
It all started with an Instagram post. She's an actor, sus much. Mm -hmm. She's an actor and posts a lot of reels and things about dating. And one in one of them, she said she said she'd rather be abducted than have to go through dating apps again. And apparently, aliens are also on Instagram because that night she got abducted, <laughs> and she says that it was a. <laughs> a very calming experience with this yellow light. And she thought, I think I'm being abducted by aliens. This must be a dream. But it wasn't. She wasn't scared. And she was in this room with the five aliens and immediately saw, ready? Mm -hmm. Emmanuel. So she's called Emmanuela. Mm -hmm. And he's called Emmanuel. Oh, well, that's, you know, I, yeah. I guess that's good for monogrammy. Right. Well, she fell immediately in love when she saw him and they've been together a year. So the similarity in names, this is because, right, aliens don't have names. So she changed her name from Abby to Emanuela, which is her middle name. And she gave him the male counterpart, Emmanuel. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> she couldn't have just called him Steve or... No. Um, yeah, this this is Terry. That's how you know it's a different person and not just some <laughs> shit I made up. <laughs> exactly. Um, they've been on dates, but he doesn't really get how they work. But she's been traveling in outer space too. Uh, sorry, in outer space too. Um, though she can't travel too far, as her human form can't take it. So she can't go to his own his home planet in the Andromeda galaxy. Mm -hmm. But they go to the cinema and stuff. She has placed his spirit. Oh, fuck me she has uh, i don't know why i i forgot about this when this is literally on her lap in the entire interview mm -hmm. she has placed a spirit inside an inflatable alien doll as he doesn't have a physical form on this plane okay well this combines two things i like which is people coming up with crazy shit about dating ghosts and yeah. aliens and haunted dolls i, I like yeah. everything yeah yeah um, so this is where it kind of has a commonality with, with like ghosts and stuff. So they speak tele uh, telepathically and they are intimate. <laughs> sure. I know, right? Oh, the voices inside your head. Okay. <laughs> right. um, she said, direct quote, ready? For <laughs> <laughs> Once you go alien, you'll forget Earthmen. <laughs> oh, see, I thought it was going to rhyme. It does. Once you go alien, you forget Earthmen. It's like alien eh, men. I know. But that's a really strained rhyme, though. It is, but do you know what? She's trying so hard with her delivery. Yeah, yeah, okay, all right. It's really sweet. Slash pathetic. <laughs> um, she says it's better because she says it's better than like human sex because the aliens are made from love and light, and um, apparently our human forms can't even go all the way that aliens can because it would kill you. So, but, all right, but, but compared to human men, it's times a million. Like, all right. Oh, okay. So, a couple of technical questions, Your Honor. Um, <laughs> proceed <laughs> i'll allow it uh, for, for one thing if there is no physical the, i mean basically what we're talking about is the elusive hands-free orgasm here right yes and because no one ever said oh my god her love is so tight <laughs> <laughs> or or you know his Light you don't is know so that, big. though. It's a objection. Uh, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, you're right. It's a big world, and a lot of people have said a lot of things. But I find it hard uh, to imagine a scenario in which, mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. uh, taking it at face value, you know, yes. it's just doing the weird shit that they do in Demolition Man to have sex, where they just sit cross-legged across from each other and think at each other or whatever <laughs> yeah and yeah. not not do as Sly Stallone paraphrased the hunka chunka <laughs> which, which as we all know is the most fun thing to do with another person yeah yeah other than you know a, a, a rousing game of settlers of Catan obviously yeah that would go higher for me 
Eh, it depends. But yeah, I, the, all of this seems like obviously the reason we're talking about it is because all, it seems fucking crazy. Yeah. yeah. But in particular, like I have, there are so many layers I mean, to this. I, I have, just wonder why she's. I wonder why she's put him in a inflatable doll. Of all things. Oh yeah. Why not just put him in a dildo? I mean, yeah. That would make more sense. But, right, so when they go to the cinema, though, she can't take a dildo, really, with her, can she? I mean, depends on how big it is. <laughs> yeah, but then he won't be able to see the film. Well, but, you know, if, if it's like a vibrator or something, you just prop it up. <laughs> yeah, but, like, yeah, but your screen checks. You get kicked out. Uh, I mean, would you? I mean, look. For- yes. For all of America's problems, I don't know that you would get thrown out of a theater for having a vibrator out, as long as it was the turned off. Is, like you wouldn't, un- you wouldn't know. With, and I speak from experience, you wouldn't be able to tell necessarily what it was with night vision goggles. You would just see some protruding, looking, potential gun-looking. Sure. Yeah, thing. yeah. So you would call your manager, and then they'd be like, "Right, well." And then the fact that your attention is called to the fact, that even though it's not a gun, you're very happy about that. It's still, yeah. Right, and depending on the cleanliness of the thing, the smell alone could be... <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And what if it's a kid's film? <laughs> right. You know? Yeah, I've got a little mermaid of my own here. <laughs> little, little mermaid meet my rabbit. <laughs> yeah, no. Mm, gross. <laughs> Thumper. <laughs> <laughs> right uh yeah this <sighs> okay so i'm, like I'm sorry i feel continue well no you go if you've this... got no I, i'm is the end of the rainbow on this is she just saying like hey me and emmanuel are yes. are emmanuel and i uh are, right. we are very happy together um with, with him in this doll and i get the dating thing as far as, you know, looking at it from the alien point of view of, like, what do you do? You go out and ingest food, and somehow that is a bonding experience. Like, I get, yeah. f- from an outsider's perspective, it all seems yeah, kind of yeah. strange. And honestly, sex from an outsider's perspective probably seems pretty weird if you're talking about a species that has evolved beyond the physicality of, like, you want to put your what in my what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It always reminds me of... um you know, in Dogma, when Alan Rickman's like, the faces you people make mid-coitus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and like, is what people have a sex for fun and entertainment. <laughs> um, <Right. laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. And also as well, like, you know, aliens probably don't eat. Like, they don't need to eat. They don't have, like... Although apparently, though, they do... Apparently, they're big fans of this morning show called This Morning in the UK. Um, because they... Uh, they find it fascinating because they they cover a lot of topics about the human race and so they find it fascinating to learn about humans from this morning so <clears throat> well all right yeah. that leads me to another question if they're wa- if they're watching all of this daytime television how do they avoid the dating stuff because that is or at least in here in america there is always that celebrity news segment <laughs> in the daytime television block that is going to give you everything you could ever want to know about being seen in public well in a yeah romantic scenario right i mean they don't i don't think they really have that in morning television here they just see people who date ghosts so <laughs> i can imagine they're probably a bit skewed yeah okay fair enough <laughs> all right uh, more of a cultural yeah i, I yeah, maybe a cultural thing. right if and, they're like particular to this one show they're not going to get any of that like dating segment and honestly good for them for taking a look at the rest of the world and just saying you know what strictly uk (laughs) i mean i don't know why not canada or something or like in new zealand but yeah sure we'll take it (laughs) well you know obviously the canadian problem is all the apologies no very come on england we'd say sorry for everything i'll bump into some i'll like have someone bump into me and i'll say sorry like (laughs) Yeah, maybe it's, it's just the thing. better beer. Maybe we do have. Maybe it's the bad chocolate. Uh, yeah, that's have true. Yeah. Elite chocolate. 
Yeah. Mm. Do you want to hear the last last bit? Oh, of course I do. Okay. So <laughs> she wants him to propose, but she but he's still learning human customs, as we've discussed. Uh -huh. And she's pretty traditional and wants a ring. But because he doesn't really understand the concept, when she turned around and said that she wanted a big rock, he brought her some pebbles from the beach. Um, he has no worth money, so uh -huh. she's saving for her own ring. Um, because if he were to get one from his planet, it would be really obvious that it was an alien ring and she doesn't want him to end up in Area 51 with the other aliens. But apparently she can go on national television and the internet about it. Um, they decided that as a couple that because the show being really popular with aliens, because this was sort of raids on the show, like, so, you know, are you nervous about being on TV about it then? And they were like, they decided as a couple mm -hmm. that because the show being popular with aliens, that they would come on as a way to gradually accustom Earth to aliens because the aliens want to come and help us as they're worried about us. But if they come on too strong, there's a good chance of war. Um, but what is quite lols is that we're kind of like, the scuzz planet apparently <laughs> yeah, yeah that fits yeah it tracks so apparently when they get to send to earth from their own planets it's considered like a downgrade <laughs> like ew do we have to so do you think you know emmanuel's <laughs> friends like you know krebnar as he's known to his friends or whatever do you think they're just kind of giving him shit all the time like oh yeah no know. they actually address that on the show they're just like oh god we've got to go and like and, drop him off again because like he's part of the ship and the crew so right well and yeah and also if you're that advanced as a civilization it would be like if you ran into somebody that was dating a chimpanzee yeah you're kind of like all right cool for you bro this all legit yeah uh -huh. okay. I, yeah like i think this is against the law like we love you bro we're here for you you know we support you and as long as you're happy, but maybe have a rethink. <laughs> you know, yeah. But he's, he's probably you're putting like, your what and where? <laughs> he's probably like what his buddies give a shit about. He's like, look, as soon as I'm done with this rotation, I'm out of here. <laughs> and she's like, oh, do you know what would be so funny if she's bugging him for like an engagement? And he's like, what's an engagement? Wink, wink. You know, and he's purposely <laughs> right. trying to like, oh i don't know your human customs here's some rocks actual rocks and he's just like yeah i'm just playing her guys like you know she's i've got her right around my finger we'll be off to like planet zerklog soon and yeah. i'll get some real pussy you know i told her i didn't have earth money ha 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 <laughs> exactly oh <laughs> even girl. though it rains diamonds on our planet <laughs> But I told her she can't come here because her mere meek human form could not take it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Right. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> We've nailed it. We uh -huh. fucking busted this wide open. I it's feel not sorry for cheating it. if you're in a different galaxy. <laughs> Don't tell my wife. <laughs> yeah. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> what goes on galaxy crusade stays on galaxy crusade <laughs> that's right <laughs> what can i say she's a freak <laughs> oh my gosh honestly and she's like she dresses like she's out of fucking xanadu or some shit she's got like the fucking mirrored sequin things on her forehead and this bleach blonde hair and Oh, it's just some kind of crazy shit. <laughs> you know Margaret does not use her orifices. <laughs> Emanuela is down for whatever. She a ho. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do oh, you want to join us? She said she's cool with a third. <laughs> I'm like, she's like, should we bring in a unicorn? And he brings an actual unicorn. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and she's just like yeah you know it still fits <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> uh yeah this is pretty good i like the fact that we have opened up our weird dating situation to just the universe <laughs> hey we're uh, you know we're not close-minded people 
Right. I mean, we gotta <laughs> we'll find judge that. the shit out of you, but like, you know, we we won't we won't not let you be on our show. So. Next time around, we gotta look for the 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 woman who's like dating Sasquatch. Oh, I'll find it if it's out it's, there. I'll find it. Oh, it's gotta be out there. It's gotta be right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, if look, if people are fucking ghosts and uh, aliens in fucking you know hinky. trapped inside a doll, a big hairy Sasquatch, <laughs> like you know. That seems like 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 uh, women who like bears, you know, mm-hmm. like that kind of mm-hmm. thing. It's just the the natural extension. Yeah, I um, I reckon that there could be like shit. What did I, I just literally thought of it? And the fucking thing just went out. Oh, I reckon there's someone who claims that they're dating like a mermaid or some shit. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah, and they're just like Phil. That's a manatee. You have been fucking a manatee <laughs> for. <laughs> well, I love her. She's a great listener, she is. <laughs> he watches Cold Skin with her. It's like their date movie. Oh, yeah. The Lighthouse. And yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, all that shit. Yeah. Siren uh, and stuff. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh. Well, should we talk about our actual movie? <laughs> Black Swan. Yeah. Yeah, we're talking about fucking like, animals and shit. Yeah. Yeah, speaking of. Um, speaking of. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well and obviously we want to talk a little bit too about the idea of obsession because that's yeah. yeah you know this movie ultimately is about a character that is um obsessed with being the perfect dancer and uh, along the way realizes that or or is told that being perfect also means being passionate Yes. You know, that that is the thing that she lacks in her life and her dancing. And, you know, watching it again, uh, it, so the, the, the quick s- summary of the beginning of this, at least, is Natalie Portman is a dancer in a company that, that's going to launch a new production of Swan Lake. Um, the older dancer in the troupe, played by Winona Ryder, is being bounced right the fuck out of there for being old. Yeah, and she's very bitter about it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But one of my favorite scenes in the movie is when um, <laughs> when uh, Natalie Portman goes to her later to be like, I, I understand how you feel. And she's like, get the <laughs> fuck out of here! Yeah, uh, and starts stabbing up her face. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's, that's just a delusion. So. Probably, because, the you know, as we learn, um, Natalie Portman is, is kookaburra in this movie. yeah she's losing her fucking mind <laughs> right um but yeah i mean so she gets an opportunity like she she has this very uh precise and and um you know like she has a lot of talent but she lacks this sort of Blah. yeah you know that that sort of joie de vivre or whatever the the, yeah. the sense of of uh danger and wildness that portraying yeah. the black swan in the in the ballet requires yes and she has her mother as played by barbara hershey what? who not There's since some icons in this fucking film no kidding but i mean not since piper laurie and carrie has a mother been oh. you know so maniacal in that way yeah and like it's a ve- yeah actually you know what i've never thought of that comparison before but fuck yeah like that whole yeah like and and it's and because she takes dancing like a religion almost you know it's it's like it's you know the way that she is trying to keep her her daughter childlike and this is your goal and, and her goal is her goal but then at the same time though like well i say this actually but thinking about it like Natalie Portman is more maniacal, I suppose, actually, because, but she's just very manipulative and she's very, like, um, like emotionally manipulative. Yeah. And, like, she's supportive until Natalie Portman begins to succeed. Yeah. And and then it's like, I got to tear you down. Like, I need you wanting to be a great dancer, but I can't have you actually being a great dancer. No, because then I'm going to lose you. Right. And her yeah. bedroom, like one, again, one of those things that as I watched it again, you know, she's got the bedroom of a child. She does. Yeah. And she says at one point she's 28 and it's yeah. like, 
Jesus, you know, because Natalie Portman is she's such a beautiful person, and she and she does have a very young. I mean, because this is what two thousand nine, two thousand ten, two thousand twenty ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is thirteen years ago, you know. So she was probably yeah about twenty eight or something, but she has such a youthness about her. Like if someone told me that she was twenty two, I'd be like, yeah, I buy that, you know, and mm. like. I I've seen this film a number of times but there's always like a few years in between and it's been a couple of years since I've last watched it and I'm and I always forget that she's 28 in this and every time I'm like fuck because like I don't know a single I don't know a single 20 year old uh, actually actually in saying that my ex's sister is like 35 and her bedroom's like that and she's really? never moved out yeah she's a fucking mess like and because <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's a dickhead person too so i don't mind saying it uh -huh. um like <clears throat> she's um like yeah that like you'll go in and she has like a pyramid of disney plush toys on her bed and like her christmas list when i used to bother buying her christmas presents um it read like a child's fucking christmas list it was like disney toys jigsaws stuff like this yet she was like a manager at a really prestigious bank and i'm just like i don't understand this you're 35 and like she um lived at, lives at home she's never moved out um and she doesn't do anything and like and it's kind of it's very sad in a way but like um like the only reason that my ex is as normal as he is and that is not much um is because he moved out at 18 to go to university and lived with a couple of gay guys like and it's the only reason that he is like remotely a normal person because like yeah her, their their mum their dad died when they were really young and their mum is a fucking nut job mm. and just like d just doesn't do anything like she just like is such a crushing type of person but in this very subtle way like i remember when she first held my kid she was like a month old <clears throat> and ava was crying because she wanted to be fed and I said, can you give her to me? She needs to be fed. And she just, she wouldn't give her to me. And then she's like shushing her. And I'm like thinking, well, that's not, that's not what she wants. Um, and I'm her mother right. giving me my fucking kid. But she's like, oh, we don't like little girls that cry. Oh, that's weird. And I was like, excuse fucking you. And there was this like light bulb moment in, in that instant where I was just kind of like, this explains so much, you know, like that's the main parental. In fact, the, that was the majority of their childhood was raised by this figure who says to a one month old baby, we don't like little girls who cry. Oh, that's, oh, that's so weird. Is that not fucked? Yeah. Apart from that though, I don't know a single 28 year old who has a bedroom like this. The fact that you know one is nuts though. Yeah, I know, right? It's crazy. Oh, wow. But. Mm -hmm. yeah. And she could move out. She's on good money and shit and she just chooses not to because she has absolutely no idea how to interact with anyone. And she doesn't. She went on, she got invited on a night out with her co workers. And she, and I was like, oh, how was that? Because I. Before I knew what an arsehole she was, I was always like trying to like encourage her to be a bit more, you know, confident and whatever. Mm -hmm. And she was just like, oh, I really didn't like it. All they did was drink and ask me questions. You mean have a conversation? Like, yeah, that's like on Friday night drinks. Yeah. Friday night drinks, they're going to be drinking and they want to have a conversation with you. So they will ask you questions. And she just did not know what to do with it. Yeah, that's weird. It's fucked up, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was it, it, honestly one of like I don't I'm not big on making like New Year's resolutions and that kind of thing, but like one of the things that I'm big um, on breaking them. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, and that's why I don't make them, right? It's just right because yeah, just, I don't want to see them fall by the wayside. So quickly. yeah, <laughs> don't but, set yourself up to fail. Just don't bother. Yeah, so, but one of the things that I wanted to do this year because I've spent so much time recently, and by recently I mean the past like two years, two and a half years, mm -hmm. doing nothing but like working to get my license to teach and then starting the mm. job and all that and going to school. And mm -hmm. so I haven't had time to do anything or go out anywhere or anything like that. And so yeah, this right. year when it, when I'm wrapped up with that, uh, one of my big, you know, resolutions for myself this year is to just go out and be more social and spend time with people, oh, yeah. before, you know, that kind of stuff that I haven't, 
I, I just haven't done because I've been so fo- focused on other stuff, which is, yeah. you know, like, look, should should there be a better balance? Of course. Am I the kind of, speaking of obsession, right? Like, I can't, it's hard for me to balance, like, here's the thing that needs to get done with here is just me being able to relax and, and be social and, and that kind of thing because I'm too, like, my brain is still at, I need to do this stuff so that I can do this thing. Uh, yeah. which is a real problem for me. My oh, oh yeah. my therapist will tell you all about it. <laughs> cool. I'll, I'll give him a call. Yeah, What's no, up? no, she can she can give you the rundown of all the the weird like OCD, you know, accomplishment shit. Yeah, uh, yeah. That I am obsessed with. No, I look forward to it. Yeah. Oh, you'll it, it'll be a good time. You'll like it. <laughs> yeah, like no, if like if my ex sister wasn't such a an asshole, I'd feel like so like I'd feel, I'd feel really like sad mm-hmm. because I'd just be like wow you just weren't given the chance and you know and now you're like you know a fully grown adult but you have this mindset of a very insecure teenager or whatever you know like <clears throat> um but you know she is um a total fucking bigot um oh so, also not great yeah yeah so I don't really feel that bad for her because I'm just like but then at the same time it's kind of like well so is your mom so you know like if that's all you you know and she lives in this area that is very like that um and you know so she's i guess it's coming from a place of ignorance as opposed to like real prejudice Mm -hmm. but still though it's very difficult to keep that in mind when she comes out with some of the stuff that she comes out with and all i want to do is punch a stupid face in and she has a real punchable face fuck me jesus christ right anyways it's fine it's not my problem he's an ex it's fine oh honestly that family triggers me so bad so. yeah it, it sounds like a real a real mess of a, a situation it really is such a fuck up of a family and i'm so glad i'm out of it <laughs> and i'm like i know it sounds awful but they don't really have any they don't really make any kind of effort with with our kid so like i'm not, and i'm really not unhappy about it <laughs> i'm just yeah fine send us money don't bother come visit that is actually my preferred option Right, right, right. I'll take a gift card over a visit any day. Fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's only so much I can fucking pain, you know? <laughs> like... um, Anyways, yeah, right. As obsessive and downtrodden mother. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I, I, yeah, I really like Barbara Hershey in this as, as so good. Yeah, that, that mother that can't let go and and to the point like you know we talked about the bedroom and so forth but it's just yeah it's everything like i'm gonna cut your nails because you're scratching yourself again yeah and she literally puts her in like mittens like like you do with a newborn you know because they scratch and their nails are fucking have you fucking felt a newborn's nails they are sharp as shit um like and yeah and you put you put little mittens on them stop them from hurting themselves and their sleep and shit she does the same thing to her she buys this cake Mm-hmm. which i wouldn't even get my my kid it's so pink and with roses and it's just so pink that's yeah that's the scene that's really like oh the, all right we are not dealing with a stable person because she mm-hmm. gets the cake for natalie portman to celebrate the fact that like she gets the the part in the ballet like she's going to mm-hmm. be the the you know white swan and black swan the black swan and Natalie Portman is like, I really can't be eating this right now because, you know, I got to watch my weight and my stomach's all in knots as well. Like, right. I'm like, yeah, that, but I, they need the weight thing, I think probably. Right. It's, I mean, in her own way, it's like, I, you know, I appreciate it, but I need to not eat this. And Barbara Hershey's <laughs> immediately is like, oh, well, fuck me then. Let's just throw the cake away. Yeah. And, and she's like, no, 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 I don't mean it like that. And, you know, and that's like Barbara Hershey has two gears in this movie. One is like the doting mother that infantilizes Natalie Portman. And the other is the cruel mother that is trying to tear her down. And yeah, it's, exactly. And the switch gets flipped on a dime. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's like, you know, when Natalie Portman really stands up to her. And stuff, and then the next morning she's just sat sullen in this chair, mm-hmm. like I'm waiting for you, kind of thing. Like, and like Natalie Portman's like, I don't have time for this shit, you <laughs> know. Um, yeah, and- but like, yeah, it's just like that. She's just 
you can tell that she kind of has this arsenal of emotional manipulation and these like things of like I know what I'll do in this situation I know how I'll do with this situation kind of thing you can tell that she just sort of has this these kind of like things that she'll do to elicit a particular response from Nina Natalie Portman's character and like you know and I think it obviously as it goes on and Natalie Portman sort of moves away from this docile very submissive daughter like that's when her behavior sort of ranks up more and more because she is she's losing that control over her yeah and and does these really petty things like when the night after you know natalie portman and mia kunis go out you know in in theory to celebrate um natalie portman getting the role and and to Mm -hmm. cut loose a little bit and so forth even yeah. though it will get into that relationship in a minute, but <laughs> yeah, we will. Uh, <laughs> but when she does the play of like Natalie Portman comes home drunk, goes to bed, she has the you know what we later learn is this fantasy of having this you know I- incredibly Night. hot session with Mia Kunis, yeah. and yeah. but then lets her oversleep for the audition. Yeah, and the rehearsal. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Or, yeah, not yeah, not the audition. She's already got the part. But yeah, yeah, yeah. And right, and it's a and real it's like fucked the up last thing. rehearsal as well. Like it's the day of, and it's they've got all they're on the stage. They're learning the routine, but like with all the place settings and everything, the stage settings and stuff, and like you know all of that stuff. So it's it's like one of the most important rehearsals, and she'll know that she's a dancer. She'll mm-hmm. know how important that is, and she still lets sleep in because she's such a fucking cunt. Right, yeah, I mean, it, but it's totally just to get back at her for, you know, showing any kind of disobedience and, and mm-hmm. you know, standing up for herself. And so mm-hmm. Barbara Hershey is going to get back at her by completely sabotaging the career that she, you know, has professed that she wants Natalie Portman to have. Oh, yeah, you can tell that she's, like, the main driving force behind her wanting to get into dancing to this level and like <clears throat> and also like the maniacal precision that like Natalie Portman instills in all of her dancing and things because she's got this maniacal fucking mother behind right. it all which yeah, I hadn't really thought about it but just taking that to the extreme uh mm-hmm. you know the reason she is such a good precise dancer is probably for that very reason that she doesn't necessarily have passion for dance but she's been doing it for so long, mm. you know, and, and has enough natural ability and so forth that it, you know, that, that it works, but she doesn't have the passion for dance, which is the whole thrust of the movie is that mm. you know, she's got this incredible talent and, and, uh, you know, precision with her movements. But, you know, when, when you first see Mia Kunis, uh, oh. dancing and, you know, the head of the company is comparing them uh, as played by Vincent Cassell. And he's, you know, saying like, look, it's it's effortless. Like, you know, mm. her dancing isn't as precise as yours, but, it, you know, she's dancing with this kind of natural ability that just is compelling and makes you want to look at her and, and that sort of thing. Um, yeah. She stands out. Yeah. 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 Because she's not, a complete carbon copy of everything and she smokes and she drinks and she does drugs and she you know um you know she's very very loose and, and not only just very loose but very confident as well mm-hmm. like she's never out of control she's never you know she's very um she's like she she dares to bend the rules but like to her it's not even like a thing She's not doing it to be like, you know, a rebel or anything. She's just doing it's like, that's what I want to do. What's the problem here? There's no problem. Yeah. Like, whereas Natalie Portman is just the complete opposite of that. And she can't draw outside the lines no matter what, you know, like, and, you know, there's obviously like a level of admiration, but also jealousy there. And you can see, like, why can't, like, she's sick, like, you can see on her face, like, why can't I do that? Why can't I be like that? Why can't I, you know, um, 
and it's like such a an interesting dynamic between those two like Mina Kunis really isn't in it very much at all um <clears throat> but when she is she's always engaged with with Nina and it's almost like to me she's like the little devil on her shoulder mm -hmm. um and you know just sort of like whispering in her ear and like nudging her in certain ways but like there's a freedom with it as well like you know that Nina really wants to be like Lily you know she really kind of like wishes she had that freedom to be able to not necessarily do all the things that she does but just have the ability to do it if she wanted to but she's so restricted by like her own psyche and her mother and you know her expectations of herself and what she feels the expectations are from her peers and things like that you know that she just can't do it until like I mean until it's kind of too late <laughs> yeah well yeah um I, I'm just kind of unpacking a lot of the things that you were talking about there because I, yeah, it, Mia Kunis is the, you know, the black swan version of her. Yeah. That is the, the more free, the more natural, the, the one who Central. has, right. And you see it like when they, uh, when they're going to get drinks and immediately, you know, there's that waiter that's kind of hitting on Mia Kunis Mm -hmm. And she makes the line about when he's like, hey, do you need more cheese? And, uh, you know, she's like, well, I think we've got enough from you. And yeah. he's like, oh, yeah, okay, I fucked up. I'll leave now. Mm -hmm. um, but it's that kind of thing of like, oh, I can easily dismiss somebody because I know who I am. I know what I want. I, yeah. you know, like, um, and and as you said, it's it's something that she, that, Natalie Portman wants to be, but also like she's so pent up and she's so reserved that you know if she lets that out, it's gonna fucking explode. You know, it is that yeah that pressure cooker, which is you know, spoilers, exactly what happens is exactly what happens. You know, like like when they go out and, and she she starts drinking and doing uh the E. Mm. and um you know they're she's dancing with guys and then she's dancing with mia kunis and you know they have the uh or at least imagined as we find out later um you know love scene with each other mm -hmm. and when you find out later that it didn't happen and mia kunis's reaction is like oh you had this lesbo fantasy about me was i any good how was it yeah she's not phased like she's like oh that's hilarious right yeah yeah that's great fantastic and, and but there's also that element of manipulation from mia kunis too because she clearly is wanting to move up the ladder yes and is is setting traps for natalie portman to fall into one of them being hey let's go out and get loaded because i know i can handle it and the and you cannot and yeah. and so when you know, you don't show up on time. I'm there ready to go to be mm -hmm. your understudy. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's uh, like all that stuff is There's really There's so fun. many different things that play in this film. It's so, so good. Yeah. And also what I was going to say is like, I wonder if like, you know, this sort of like need for Nina to be, you know, more free in things, whether that would even occur to her if it weren't for this role and Vincent Cassell um you know Toma being so like like giving her such this like you know, urging her to let go and and you know and things because like I feel like if she was you know in another role if it was a different play that if a different ballet sorry that he um that he had selected and stuff and there wasn't this dual personality and there wasn't this necessarily like a need for that passion to come through if it was a more precise um performance like would she like even be um searching for it in that way or is she is she is she doing it even her search for passion and even her her need to let go is still coming from a place of being told what to do. <laughs> yeah, it, that, that's an interesting idea. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think it's the perfect. I storm. think eventually she would, but like, probably, maybe, but like, it just seems interesting that she just it, the thought never even occurs to her until Vincent Cassell has her in his office. 
Well, and it's, you know, the this growing desire to break away from her mother, which is clearly already there. Yeah. And Vincent Cassell is, you know, without knowing that dynamic, is encouraging her to be more rebellious and to be, you know, more assertive and, and live freer and... You know, like one of her homework at one point is like, you know, <laughs> go home and touch yourself. Um, oh, my God. I've said, OK, so I've said this on, I'm pretty sure, Edna's in my other show, or at some point, there is this uh, British stand-up comedian called Russell Kane, and he does that whole scene on one of his stand-ups. And then it first off, he absolutely smashes it. Like mm-hmm. it's it's and I uh, I'm not gonna lie, it's I don't want to say it's ruined that scene for me, but all I can hear is Russell Kane going like <laughs> like the black swan. I need to be the black swan. Mm-hmm. Um and like because <laughs> he sounds exactly like Vincent Cassell. But then he then turns around and he's like, Can you imagine if this was set in Essex? Because uh because uh, uh, Russell Kane is from Essex. Mm. Like, can you imagine if this was set in Essex? Like, come on then, love, send yourself home, fuck one off, and have a couple of sambukas, yeah? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's so fucking funny. And like, <laughs> it's so annoying because I know that I've tried to find the clip on it for wherever I fucking mentioned this at some point in the past before. Um, and I can't find it on YouTube anywhere, so I think I might just have to record it off my TV and just put it on because it's just it's so fucking good and he's so fucking funny with it. <laughs> just, I always, always, always think of that fucking stand up <laughs> whenever I watch that scene. Yeah, and Fuck I, you, Russell Kane. <laughs> I really like how in this movie, like liberation and sex are kind of the same thing. Yes. You know, like like freedom to please yourself, mm-hmm. it, especially female like female sexuality in that way. You know, yeah. it's such a repressed thing. Right? Yeah, I guess it's just assumed that guys are doing it because look, we are. You just face uh, animals, yeah, it... right? Look, you give us. Uh, you know, if we're b- two cars behind in the drive-through, it's like, well, I got like six minutes here. That's more <laughs> than enough someone. time. <laughs> it's like warm and close you know <laughs> right i've got a baseball glove in here somewhere come on <laughs> yeah i got a phone that can that can get me to Pornhub. yeah and you know three uninterrupted minutes and that's really all i need <laughs> but but yeah. yeah it's it is the you know the the you know the like natalie portman is that kind of prim and pop proper Virgil. In fact, one of the conversations they have is, you know, when he's like, "Are you a virgin?" And yeah. well, then you have nothing to be embarrassed about, and, and yeah. that sort of thing. So, yeah, it's. I can't imagine her being a virgin, uh, not being a virgin. Like she deaf is. Yeah, I mean, if she, yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right that she she is lying that she is in fact a virgin. Because I just can't imagine her having time for dates or even entertaining the idea of a date with someone. Or her mother allowing it. Yeah, I just can't imagine. I can't, and I definitely can't imagine her having a one night stand. No, 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 no. No, she, like, the the version of her that we meet at the beginning, she would 100% marry the, the first guy that went down on her. Uh... <laughs> yes uh so it's yeah been into uh glenn close for sure yeah right and 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 so the you know as the movie goes on she you know she does make it to the final the final show and there's the confrontation with mia kunis in the dressing room mm-hmm. um because you know she's uh late and you know uh, and our vincent cassell is like hey uh you know because of everything that's been going on she's gonna perform tonight and uh and it's the first time that we see natalie portman like truly standing up for herself where she's like have you announced it yet can you afford to given everything that happened with winona Ryder?" Mm -hmm. and so you know and that uh, impresses vincent cassell as well like he kind of goes huh maybe you can be the black swan 
Yeah, well, what what was the thing that convinces him at first that she's okay for you? That, uh, it's like her kind of standing up for for herself mm-hmm. in some respect because that's the thing he's he keeps telling her is that like I need you can do the white swan, the virginal perfect character in this ballet. The yeah, thing, no one's questioning that. Right. What I what yeah. we don't know that you can do is doing the you know the the dangerous stuff the stuff that is much more raw and passionate yeah be the seductress be the 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 bad yeah the black swan literally like you know be the um the one that will that will break the rules and you know yeah that that can be manipulative and can be sexy and all of those things and and so the black swan you know the the body horror aspect of this movie finally reveals itself as she starts to like physically become this, yeah. this black swan but not and before as well like throughout it's really horrible actually it's really cringy and horrible yeah she's like got these scratches on her shoulders um uh the backs of her shoulder blades and like her nail keeps bleeding and stuff and she like pulls off her skin it just gives me such an ick yeah and uh, up to the point where she stabs mia kunis Mm -hmm. in her dressing room uh, or natalie portman's dressing room and finds her toes fusing together as she gets ready for the the big dance the big uh the big night yeah and as she goes through originally it starts going horribly wrong when she is uh the white swan and I, you know, I wonder if that's not to sort of suggest like, oh, well, now things are totally out of balance. Now she doesn't have the precision at all anymore. No, and, and she's like, she's not actually the perfect white, like the white swan anymore. She she can't deal with that side of herself anymore. Right. It's got to be the more violent, passionate, sexual, yeah. manipulative uh, version uh, and once she becomes the black swan, like she performs, you know, this incredible, and it really is as you're watching oh, it, you're like, Oh, if you yeah. saw this performance, like, I don't really care that much for ballet, but it's, you would still be pretty blown away by it. It's, it's yeah, definitely. Incredible. Definitely. And she also has that moment where, you know, she's riding this high off her performance and then she just like sucks Vincent Cassell's face off. <laughs> yeah. The, the the he looks so pleased with himself <laughs> i really love when she is going through that you know final transformation into the black swan yeah the, that kind of bird flesh skin that she yeah. has oh it's so weird looking i really when she's it. walking through the backstage like yeah and she's yeah and then it's like that ripple yeah yeah it's so weird and her eyes start going red like yeah it's, it's it, really it's really fucked but it's so good though it, yeah it's really cool it's it's you know it, you know this is kind of aronofsky at his best mm-hmm. uh you know coming off of like you know requiem for a dream and the wrestler and stuff like that into black swan yeah. um it's you know hard to argue that he is not just crushing it every, and then he does noah and it's like what the fuck happened um <laughs> is he did he do noah did yeah. he i didn't realize that was him he did. That was that was his and and honestly, I think Noah is super interesting. As I haven't movie. seen it, it's not what you think it is. Okay, because there's like fucking monsters and stuff roaming around in that movie. Um, oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's really weird, and I I don't think it's great, but I think it's really interesting. Yeah, and. Okay. and you know, like it's it's a mo- it's kind of a bad movie that only a genius could make. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that needs to be back on the back of the cover. Right, right. <laughs> well, and I, I, I'm kind of uh, ripping that off a little bit from Roger Ebert. I, I, I think it was. Oh, right. <laughs> I think he was talking about Death to Smoochie. Oh, right. And he said only really talented people could make a movie that's this much of a mess. <laughs> and, and that notion has always captured my imagination of like if you're gonna take the big swings sometimes you're gonna whiff 
Yeah. And that's yeah. how I felt about Noah was like, this is kind of a whiff, but it's a really interesting swing to take. Yeah. Um, and I felt the same way, like Alexander Payne doing downsizing. I don't, I think that movie is a total I mess. Like but Matt, think, Matt, Matt Damon. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't see it. It's, it looked awful. It's not great, but it's not great in a really interesting way. Okay. You know, like it's it, going to be one of those ones in like 20 years time where I was like, ah, oh, it just wasn't understood at the time. It's an actual masterpiece. It, it might be. It might be like a like a Bowie album where it's not until a decade or more later that that you're like, oh, wow, that was really good. I just didn't understand it. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So but yeah, so she what we realize uh, as she's giving this performance is that uh, Mia Kunis is alive Yes. For one thing, she is not dead in the dressing room and that she has stabbed herself. And so when it comes to the end of the, the performance, when she's giving the big, you know, crescendo uh, bit uh, that we swan dive. Yeah, the literal swan dive in, onto a mattress like she falls off the stage uh, intentionally. But when she does so, um, they realize like, oh, she is bleeding out her gut yes and you know that she says like oh it was perfect i was perfect yeah and i felt perfect i felt perfection yeah yeah perfect. yeah and, and and so that's kind of you know the the thrust of black swan but it's you know to, to do our movie review portion of it like it's a great fucking movie it's really oh. It is a phenomenal film. Like every time I watch it, I'm like, God damn it, that is so fucking good. Like it's just, I, I I have no critique on it. Like bad critique, I mean. Like it's just to me, it's just it's an absolutely phenomenal film. Like that is one of the rare ones that I give like a ten out of ten on. Yeah, I yeah because every relationship is interesting. Um, you get. Like all, all everything that's sort of around um, Natalie Portman's character, like everything is there for a reason, and it's all. Yeah. Uh, oh, there's nothing wasted on this film, right? And look, can we please go back to the days where these movies are an hour forty-five, which is what <laughs> this movie is? It's an hour forty-eight yeah. minutes. It is you know, everything it needs to be. Yeah, it's funny because when I was cracking it on the other night, I was just like, oh god. It's going to be like a two, it's like, so it's like a two and a half hour film or something just because of the type of film it is like they usually are like and then i whacked it up and um and i double checked and i was like hour 49 mm -hmm. yeah all right i'll take it if sure like you know like, um i always appreciate a short run time <laughs> yeah i yeah I, I understand this you know this urge that like people need to get bang for their buck or whatever that no. hey, if you if you're taking time out to go to the theater, then it's got to be a two hour twenty thirty minute epic. But no, just give me quality. That's all I ask. Yeah, like I watched Barbie recently and realized, like, oh, this movie's like an hour forty, yeah. and it's perfect. It's great. Yeah, this is exactly what this movie needed to be. Thank God it wasn't two hours and ten minutes long. Oh my goodness! Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah, hundred percent agree. I yeah, uh, that that's just me being a cranky old man shaking my no, fist you know at the I moon. Think, no, do you know what though? I think as I think as well when you watch as many films as you and I do, and like especially when like you're a film podcaster, like <laughs> you have to watch so many films, and like not only just for like the shows and stuff you're doing, but you also want to watch them just for your enjoyment. But then you also have like you know your life as yeah. well and other commitments and things so you've got a film and it's like especially if it's a film that you're reviewing and things so it's not like ah eh, maybe i'll watch this another time you're like no i actually do need to watch it now and then it's like a two and a half or three hour movie you're just like cool 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 you know like, yeah. i guess i'm watching this then yeah, <laughs> so it, my afternoon barbara <laughs> well and i usually i i don't watch a movie a day but pretty close to it yeah uh, because usually when I wrap up all my work in the evening, what I like to do is I'd like to eat a little dinner and watch a movie. And that's, that's yeah. kind of how I do my thing. And, uh, but I also like to have some time to read it, it, God, God damn it. I, th this is the saddest thing I will, I will say this entire show, but what mm -hmm. I really like to do is I like to eat a little dinner. I like to watch a movie, have a cup of tea and then read for a little bit. And then I go to bed. No, that's not, that's amazing. That sounds like that's that. 
that's perfection. It, it, I love it. It, and most of my nights are like that. And what oh. throws it off is when I sit down to eat. And I'm like, what movie do I want to watch? Uh, you know, I I've been meaning to catch up to Oppenheimer or Killers of a Flower Moon. It's like three hours and ten minutes long. What the <laughs> fuck? Like I can't. That's not the kind of life I live. <laughs> I, can't, I can't be watching a movie for three and a half fucking hours. <laughs> Yeah, no, a hundred percent. Um, the other thing that we we definitely wanted to touch on because you know we're not just talking about obsession in this movie, but we've both got obsession relationship stories. Oh yeah. And so you go first because yours are always better, and I'll, then I'll just make mine short, or I'll make one. No, <laughs> no, go with yours first. Okay, all right. So yeah. this is a relatively recent thing. Oh. And uh, I'm one of those people. Uh, th- so uh, I went out on uh, a couple of dates. Uh-huh. And it was uh, it was good. You know, we had a good time. Uh, it, it was um, a lot of fun. And um, the... <laughs> And I, you know, pretty, pretty upfront, I was like, Hey, I want to take things a little bit slow. Um, okay. you know, cause I'm, uh, you know, at the end of the day, still working my way through, you know, the, the heaviness of the last relationship that I was right. in. Yeah. Last... That, and that was full on. Yeah. And so I was like, eh, you know, I just want it to be kind of casual. And then, you know, if it, if, if it really humps along, then great. Humps. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> And, uh, and it became, I think, obvious pretty quickly <clears throat> that yeah. the person I was with, who was awesome, let me just say this up front. Okay. There's nothing about this person that was, uh, was, uh, uh off-putting or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was great. Mm. But she was like. I like you. I'm into this. I'm all in. Okay. And I was like, I am not. That is not where I am right now. And, but, you know, it was, and maybe this isn't like a hundred percent obsession, but it was definitely that thing of like, you are into this relationship in a way Mm -hmm. that I'm not. Yeah. Like way more than. Right. You're in with both feet. Yeah. And you know, like the the conversation never went this way, but you could definitely tell. Like it was a lot of hey, I'm I'm talking to my friends about you. You should meet my, you know, my kids are adults, but you should meet them. Ooh. Yeah, right. And I'm just like <laughs> I don't know about any of this. After how long is that? Um, you know, about a month or so yeah but it's it's still early days it's still early days like, um, and it wasn't like you know I it's need not you. like you have to pick her up from like her parents house or something and like get the lowdown from her dad or whatever is no. it? you know like yeah but you know but it was, it was sort of like hey you know my my uh my son still lives at home so let's just get that meeting out of the way and so that it's not weird if we're hanging out and he's there why would it be weird that he's not a teenager? Um, or is he? Oh, I mean, he was. He was, but like oh. kind of a later teenager. Oh, right. But he probably doesn't really give too much of a fuck either right. which way. No, no, no. Like, I don't think he would give a shit. No. But it was it was me that was giving the shit. And yeah. And I was the shit giver in this situation. <laughs> um. So, yeah. So, you know, that was sort of... You know, it, it was... Re- it was really uncomfortable because on a on an intellectual level, I was like, all of this is actually very good, you know, because mm-hmm. she is really cool. We have a lot in common. Mm-hmm. You know, she's a stable human being. She's not a mm-hmm. lunatic. Yeah. Um, That's nice. Which, must be nice. <laughs> yeah, look, it doesn't happen often. Uh, so all of that stuff was really positive. So like I said, on an intellectual level, I was like, all of this should be great. And in fact, that was the thing I kept telling myself was, 
I don't know why I'm not responding to this in a positive way because I <laughs> should. Like the rest of us. Right. Yeah, you're right. We uh, need the damage. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, not the damage. I just, uh, yeah, I don't know. I and, do. and, and since then I've been like, I just don't need anybody for a while. Cause clearly I fucked this up. Um, but yeah, it was definitely a situation of like, you know, like, look, we've got to talk and you, oh, and no. right. And I felt so bad cause I was like, you are great. Like legitimately a great person that on paper, if I had sat down to say like, here is the kind of person I ought to be dating. It was her. It was her to a T. Um, and bye, 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 bye. I know, but I was like, I am not in a place for this right now like i feel wildly uncomfortable mm -hmm. and you can't help that though it does, and it doesn't have to be a personal thing about that other person it can literally be like like i've said i say this all the time so i'm on dating apps unfortunately i don't have much of a choice because where i live it's not so much of a dating pool it's more of a dating puddle mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. so i i always sort of preface any dates with like hey by the way like i you could be the best looking guy the nicest guy on the planet but if that vibe is not there nothing that you can do right. is gonna make me want to bang you you know like i i literally I, like i went on this date with this guy who was gorgeous i think like, i think i might have said about it actually like it's really gorgeous he was funny we got on well blah blah and i know it's such a dumb thing <clears throat> But as soon as I like met him, not only because he was wearing way too much aftershave and it was mm. like, eh, 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 which mm. is just nah, but also as well, I just was immediately like, nope, don't fancy you. And like, it's it's not that he didn't look like his pictures. It's not like he was a totally different person or anything like that. It was just literally as soon as I meet someone, I will either know or I won't. You know, like I either will or I won't, sort of thing. You know, yeah, yeah. and it's it's not personal. So I have to sort of preface that every time I go on a date. Going, by the way, like just because I'm flirting with you now and just because of whatever, that means nothing until we actually meet. Because I will not know whether I actually fancy you in in person or not until we meet. Yes, yeah. and it's just something you can't help. You just can't help it. Like it's not because they're a bad person. I hooked up with this guy before, and there was just it was, uh, it was like a, a couple of months ago. And I went around and there were so many green flags. Like he 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 met me in the car park of his apartment, um, like met me at my car so that I wouldn't have to walk up to the flat on myself. I was following him. His hoodie on the back said something like, um, I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was like to the person reading this behind me, you matter. Mm -hmm. um, and then like we get up, his apartment's actually, and not just like shit, I've just done a quick rip round clean. He clearly takes care of his flat. I go into his bathroom and he's got, the ordinary products which if you don't know what that is like that is like i'm pretty sure he's come out of a long-term relationship because i don't know any man who knows about the ordinary products on his own and actually uses them and like he's like really complimentary he like you know does all the right things the sex is actually pretty good um he's making me feel confident like you know he's as i say saying on doing all the right things and then for some reason afterwards i just got the ick mm. And I had to, and I ended it with him. And I was like, nah. So I like, I didn't. But I was supposed to stay that night, and I all I could, I could not get out of that flat, that flat fast enough. And I don't know why. Maybe it was, maybe it was some sort of weird sixth sense. Like maybe he was actually like too perfect, and he's actually got some body stashed somewhere. You know? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and my radar's going off. But yeah, on paper there was literally the guy's fucking great, good looking guy. Do you know what I mean? Literally, and I don't know what it was. But as soon as we went to the living room, like we couldn't agree on what we wanted to have as a, as a food, like on takeaway. Um, we couldn't agree on a film. He doesn't like horror, so that was a red flag. Mm. Um, you know, like it was just like it was just such a mismatch of energy, and I was just like, nope. <laughs> you know, and I was, and I said to him like, you were a lovely guy. Like you said, you're a lovely guy. You know, literally, like you were a lovely, lovely guy. It's nothing to do with you. Trust me, this is like it's i don't want to say it's not you it's me but like it's also it is more me than you though like it's just one of those things unfortunately like but like wish you all the best and you'll be a lovely boyfriend to someone i'm sure you know oh, it's weird yeah. isn't it it's so weird yeah it, it it is strange how uh you know 
Like you said, we're we're just kind of fucked up, messy people. Not only you and me, but just in general. You yeah, know, that's just humanity. You me, well, you and I in particular, sure. <laughs> in particular. Um, but yeah, it it is kind of fucked up, and I feel I feel bad about it. Still, like I feel really guilty because I'm like every I should all of that stuff should have worked, and like if if that didn't work, then what? You know what I mean? Do you know what's really funny is I saw this meme on Instagram the other day where it was just kind of like it was something like our oh, um my mother who's 65 just told me that she um she and this guy ended things because he didn't want anything serious so yeah apparently that doesn't go away yeah 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 <laughs> is that you both <laughs> i mean currently that it, it wasn't but uh but currently it is it, it's yeah. like i don't and, and you know part of it is just my it's schedule me, and, as well yeah and it you know it yes, sucks because uh, you know I do, I do love being in, you know, a long term committed relationship. That is kind of my vibe. But oh, it's, no. uh, but also I, you know, and at this point I'm just like I'm not doing, I'm not going out with anybody right now. Not until I I can feel a little more confident about it that I'm I'm not gonna immediately uh turtle as soon as it's like oh this could be serious <laughs> you know like I, I i need to be back in a place where i i can allow for it to be serious and that's not like terrifying <laughs> to quote regina george why are you so obsessed with me <laughs> yeah yeah uh but it, you know but it, that's that also kind of sucks when you're with somebody that's like you are awesome you know like completely oh. supportive and and mm. is just like I'm here for you. You like, you make me laugh, like all that stuff that you're just like, yeah, this is exactly what I want to hear. This makes me feel like I'm a, a decent human being. instead of the piece of shit. I know I am. And, <laughs> and, um, yeah. And, and when you're just like, well, somehow that doesn't work. Like maybe, no, uh, I, just, I hate it when people are too nice. I'm like, no, give me some pushback. <laughs> yeah. I need, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I know. You know that, that that's such a, a weird, messy thing about relationships is that it's sometimes, so fucked up, isn't it? yeah, that <laughs> like the the people that seem to be best for you in like categorically, like this is you know these are people that that absolutely um, are you know in touch with their emotions and able to express things and hey, Bryce. right, you know. <laughs> just like emotionally healthy and able to you know to say here is what i want and need and i'm interested in knowing what you want and need and uh and just yeah. be like yeah, this is this feels too good i should probably get just, the fuck out of here like for me it's just ick i'm just like oh i don't know why i'm so fucked up like even when you're just saying that my face is so scrunched up like mm, i think it just it comes on too strong maybe which is so fucking stupid it's so dumb right like, anyone listening don't worry we know we're the fucking problem hi it's me <laughs> i'm the problem it's me like i'm not saying it's the other person's fault at all like not at all i know that this is fucked um and i don't really know what else to do because like yeah like, and this is why i end up with terrible fucking people um <laughs> and like it's just i don't know it's just it just like be like be a good good person like be like a nice person in that but just like aim it at some at someone else not me mm -hmm. like be nice to be nice be a nice person but just don't aim all of it at me yeah yeah maybe yeah maybe that's it um but I also, just, I, yeah, Ugh. yeah, I don't know. It feels suffocating. I don't know why. I'm so. Maybe I should get back into therapy. Maybe I wasn't. Maybe I left too soon. Oh, I totally. I, in in <laughs> fact, that was something. Uh, that was something I even told her as as like we were ending things. I was like, "Look, you don't even have to say the words. I'm already I've, the call is already into my therapist because <laughs> clearly my brain is broke." <laughs> my brain done broke <laughs> yeah i have done i have done <laughs> fucked up um I'm done fucked up, Ma. yeah it <laughs> some, something's wrong with my noodle <laughs> uh but yeah that that is really uh, you know 
I but coming on too strong is like, well, is it because is it that sort of the dream in in some ways of like you have somebody that's totally oh. passionate about you? A hundred percent. See, this is the thing. This is why I'm really fucked up because the only way I want that energy is when it's like the extreme where it's like I would kill for you. <laughs> it's like Well, that's someone, frightening. Well, no, I don't mean it literally, but like that kind of like Oh, I, don't, I think I just read too much dark romance, but like it's just that thing of like don't be in don't be nice when you're being nice to me. I want drama. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I feel like these these podcast recordings are almost like therapy sessions in themselves because I just every time I come away, I'm like, there's a new problem. That's something. <laughs> yeah. I- well, that's the good thing is we don't solve any problems on this show. No. We just identify we just, more. We just identify more. Yeah, exactly. Let me. All right. Speaking of being fucked up, listen to this one. So, um, when when the relationship <laughs> I had that you know, like when I was living with my partner and you know we were taking care of her kids and that kind of thing. Um, when so when that ended. Uh, when I had started my job, that was going on. And then yeah. while I was in school, like wrapping up the end of the year, we broke up. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So, you know, go through the entire summer and then I come back this year, uh, to back to school. And there's one teacher in particular who's always like, um, you know, I, I, she told me just yesterday, as a matter of fact, was like, I really admire the fact that you are working hard all day and then going home and doing additional schoolwork. And I, I can only hope that your family is really supportive. Oh. And I just, and she said things a couple of times where I haven't corrected her because we've oh, been. Now it's too late. And well, it's not. I don't think it's too late, but at some point I've got to like make, the, make time to have that conversation where like, look, we haven't talked about this because it's, it's, you know, still kind of uncomfortable for me to talk about, but here's what's going on. Uh, so just in the future, know that when I go home at night, there is no one there, but you know, the dog or the cats. Yeah. But that's all you need. That's the only family you need. They'll never leave you. I'll never abandon you. Um, yeah, but they also here's a, this God, this or, really is a here's, here's what you could do. Yeah. You could pull a Hugh Grant in about a boy and create a fictional child. <laughs> That's not bad. I could just say, oh, they died. Like crisps in the back of your car and Yeah. Yeah. I mean just food for thought. Yeah. I, I'm leaning <laughs> You have more than one option though. I was, by your situation. Uh, so the teacher across the hall, she knows because like we we chat all the time, and yeah. so she knows the thing. Is she married? Um, no, but she's got uh somebody that I I think they're going to be married. Oh, I was gonna say you guys seem to get on. She's also like twenty six. Uh, uh, yeah. All right. I mean, you know, above board and legal and shit. But yeah, I get it. Anyways, right. Yeah. That that <laughs> that is not my dating pool. No. Uh, so. <laughs> but, the Kardashians and shit. but her advice she was like it doesn't matter which which direction you go but you've got to go big it's either you've got to break down and sob as you're explaining this <laughs> or you've got to go the other direction and be like no they're gone and it's great this is her advice yes well i mean it's sarcastic I like but i yeah oh she's oh uh, she's great yeah she's yeah, yeah. we get along real I, well i i i vote a second <laughs> right. just because that's my vibe like when people go like <laughs> like when people i i see i don't i didn't realize actually until i've just been literally just been thinking about it in that split second where i'm like i should do that a lot so i'll go like the complete thing of like people say like oh um, you know, do you get on with your family? I'm like, well, most of them I can't stand, and the rest of them are dead. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and the rest live abroad. So it's just me. Um, or like when people say like, oh, so do you want any more kids? And I was like, well, fuck, do I? I'm getting my tube side in the ear. You know, like mm-hmm. I just, I don't. 
<laughs> and like I don't give any kind of like context or anything so people just think I'm a terrible terrible person um, you know, and I'm quite, I don't care if they think that because you know the people who know me and who I actually care about their opinion know what you know know the situation know why I make certain choices or why I do certain things or why I feel certain ways and if you don't know me that well then I really don't care what you think so I'll just go like the most extreme thing of just like yeah you want to ask personal questions now yeah fuck off yeah. you know like, yeah that's what so I'm full 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 behind the second option of just going like yeah fucking left me it's fucking great screw you and your psycho kid you know like, yeah <laughs> uh yeah that's a pretty good one uh all right okay, yeah. so what what about you what give me an obsession story uh oh okay so <laughs> uh i think i mentioned didn't i i was a unicorn for a couple mm -hmm. uh, like and um it was a married couple and did i tell you about this yeah, I think we've discussed this a little. I don't know if we've discussed it on the show, but but yeah, but I, I can totally to see that because it... oh, yeah, ahead, sorry. Sorry. well no, I was just, <laughs> I was just gonna say, like I can see you being because you're you're like sexually liberal and all of the other stuff, right? Like you're you're attractive, you're smart, you're funny, your your interests are you know unique, they're not it's not like you are a very individual kind of person. Like there, you are not just a, a regular schmegular person. Oh. And so I could see, especially a couple that's like, Hey, we want to have this, you know, kind of open relationship with this other person. I could see where that would be like, Holy shit. We have found, we have, we have done struck gold. Oh, that's like, <laughs> That's really sweet. Don't say too much nice because then I'll have to break up with you. <laughs> but no, no, sorry. Anyway, I was interrupting just to tell you that, yes, I can totally see that. But please go ahead. <laughs> well, I kind of felt like I struck gold because I, um, I met up with this guy uh, through a dating app. And then we were chatting, got on really well. And then he was like, oh, yeah, by the way, I'm married. And I was just like, Ugh. and he's like, but no, 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 it's cool. Like, she knows. It's fine. Like, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay um because it wasn't it wasn't my first rodeo you know what I mean? mm -hmm. um but i'm like as long as everyone's above board like that's the thing for me in these situations i'm just like i care more about the other if the other person's not involved which it, she wasn't at first if the other person isn't involved i care more about that person than the person i'm fucking because they're the ones who are like potentially putting something at risk mm -hmm. and putting all of their trust and faith in their partner and myself um so i'm constantly like checking in hey how are they doing are they okay? Have you chatted about it? What do they know? They can talk to me. They can ask me questions. They can, you know, as much or as little as they want. Like I'm, no, I'm an open book for them, whatever it needs for them to be comfortable and secure. Like, you know, that's like really, really important to me. So I'm like, you know, as long as they know and everything's all above board, then okay, great, cool. If like, I remember I was messaging this guy and he messaged me saying, this is so exciting. My wife sat next to me and she has no idea. Mm, yeah, that's not great. And I immediately blocked him. I was yeah. like, that is not what I'm about. Thank you. But no, thank you. You're a cunt. So um, <laughs> like, it's just my personal opinion, but, um, but I am right. Um, and so anyway, so I was like, okay, great. And um, then me and him hooked up after a little while of messaging, there was like, she got cold feet about it. And so we didn't message for a bit and things. And then she came around to it. Um, and so we ended up hooking up and it was great real fucking good mm -hmm. <laughs> and um yeah and then I said because I had done a bit of Instagram snooping um to see what his wife was like and she is like I don't think I've ever met anyone as attractive as her in real life oh wow like she is like I call her a goddess because mm -hmm. she is looks like she has this like wave of long black curly hair that goes all the way down to her ass. She has got, and speaking of her ass, fuck, she's got these beautiful tattoos. She's pierced. You know what I mean? Like she's this real kind of like artsy, gorgeous, just, ugh, yeah. Anyway, so I'm like, oh, hey, so your missus, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, give her my number. 
and uh, and he was like, oh, that's funny because she was asking about you too because he'd shown her pictures. She she'd asked the same pictures of me, um, and <laughs> she didn't need to snoop. <laughs> Um, or I was um, and he was like, oh it's kind of funny because like she's actually been saying the same so like we ended up chatting and me and her just got on really really well we had actually kind of gone through some similar experiences we both have ADHD and you know both have very similar kind of attitudes and stuff and within like a few days we were just messaging constantly and um, for me it was just very exciting and then I hooked up with them both um, a week after me and her started messaging um, and we had this threesome it was great um, woke up the next I stayed woke up the next day and they were like all good you know like he was buzzing she was hung over as shit but like but she was like very happy about it and then me and her had a little like thing upstairs and then she uh, was like saying how I mean she said to me like you know oh yeah we want to kind of keep seeing you and um she had like we had so much fun last night and she said like oh it's going to be really sad when you get into a, a relationship because when you're in a relationship you're monogamous right and I was like yeah like I am like when I'm in a relationship like that you know um and she was like oh what are we going to do I'm like oh I, you don't have to worry about it like it's going to be a while <laughs> um and um but I was like, this is fucking great. I get both of my female and male me needs met. I get to have threesomes. I get to have, like, you know, like, it was fucking perfect. Do you know what I mean? And, like, they live just far enough away for it to be, like, not a constant thing, if that makes sense. Like, just a, oh, hey, like, this weekend's be free, kind of whatever, you know? Um, not, like, an, like a booty call at 2 a.m. type of jobby. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, which suits me much better. Um anyway so i get this so i'm feeling very good i leave i'm feeling great about it you know it's all good um and me and the guy because she was due to come on her period and she was just i'm just feeling ugly so maybe you and him should have like the next meet kind of thing so me and him had had something in the diary booked out and then i get this message um from him saying that like oh we've been chatting this is like a few hours later we've been chatting and actually maybe this is a bit too much too soon da, da, da. i'm like all right good because this was fucking perfect i didn't i wasn't in any kind of need to search anything else out from anyone because i was like these are all my needs met in one situation ideal and then like um yeah and he, and he was like yeah we kind of like thought about it. maybe it's a bit too much too soon like and i was just like oh shit is she okay because it kind of seemed to be more on her end than his end. And I messaged her as well. And I was like, oh, hey, like, are you okay? Like, I'm really sorry if I did anything wrong or I came on too strong or anything. And she was just like, no, it's just, I just don't think I'm as okay with seeing someone with my husband as I thought. And we just need to take some space and whatever. And I was just like, yeah, fine. Like, that's whatever it is, you know, like, it's all good. I'm not here to pressure anyone. Um, and then like that weekend she called me and she's like, I just feel really crappy about like how things left and whatever. Anyway, so skip forward and they're getting a divorce. Um, <laughs> and um, she's like messaging me again and stuff. Um, the guy is just completely, he like unfollowed me on Insta. He's like, you know, not, I mean, not that I was messaging loads, but like he never, I never heard from him again after that. I didn't message him. I wasn't about to be like chasing something that, you know, someone who didn't want to be chased. So, you know, like, but he never messaged me again. And then like, um, yeah. And then she's, but she's still messaging me and she's going like, oh, like I definitely like, this has definitely brought out like my bisexuality. And it's something that I've not really got to explore too much before. You were like the first person who I really, you know had an experience like that with to that extent and you know I, I really want to continue that with you and I was just like well I mean as long as everything's okay like you know ethically like then yeah all right and then she was just like oh I don't think actually like he isn't he is okay with it and I'm like well okay so maybe we should not then because that's not cool with me if like you are you guys are like because they were for a bit trying to like sort out their marriage and stuff but then like now they are getting a divorce and then I and then she was like and then she said like oh no actually do you know what I'm just going to focus on on myself a little bit I need to get some like clear my head and get some space there's just been a lot of change and a lot of things happening very quickly I was like yeah totally respect that I think that's probably for the best mm -hmm. 
no worries here if you ever want me kind of thing whatever you know very chill then I go on holiday to Canada and me and Sabrina I bought Sabrina um did I tell you this oh please don't tell me I told you this I've done this whole fucking run up for this story no, no, no. I'm really told. keep going I, okay. uh, so far so good okay great good okay so um anyway so I'm on so I've I've like essentially messaged this woman for a week slept with her once right okay I've slept with her husband twice you know so like that's essentially the the extent of our quote-unquote relationship you know um other than a few haphazard calls and texts otherwise so i'm on holiday in canada with sabrina i bought sabrina a really nice sexy corset for her birthday um and i also had like some corset style tops and we just thought it'd be fun to do like a little bit of a like a I say photo shoot basically propping her phone up on some books and you know putting a timer on it and like we posted them tag each other and it's all kind of a bit suggestive and a bit saucy and a bit of sapphic and whatever you know um we were sort of playing into the like the dom, dom submissive mother baby girl type thing right Ooh, sexy okay it was, it was a bit sexy um but like we were just having fun do you know what i mean mm -hmm. um but there's always this kind of like are they aren't they with me and her <laughs> and um, which we completely play into it's just very funny to us um and anyway so that night after we posted i'm cooking um because sabrina had cooked the entire trip so far and it was like my penultimate night and the next night i was we were all going around to her dad's for food so i was like let me fucking cook for you woman you've cooked all <laughs> all trip let me fucking cook all right sit your ass down fucking stop being such a control freak so you know so she does that i'm cooking and then my phone goes and it's this woman and the time difference means that it's about 1 a.m for her and she has clearly had a couple of drinks she's not like wasted wasted or anything but she's a bit tipsy mm -hmm. and she basically starts crying oh boy and she's like just tell me the truth are you with her i'm like what and she's just like i saw that post today and i just i just burst into tears and all of this and i'm like what <laughs> And I'm just like, I can't really talk right now. Like, I'm in the middle of cooking. I'm on holiday. Like, can I call you when I get home next week? Like, we can talk about this. This is, I don't really understand what this is about. And like, and she's just like, just tell me if you're with them. I'm like, I mean, no, no, but like, even if I was, that's not really anything to do with you. Like, we're not together. Like, you have ended things twice with me, to be fair, mm -hmm. um, because you were working on things with your husband. And, and like, I don't really understand why what I do is anything to do with you at this point, like not in a horrible way, but like, I don't understand why you're being upset. We're not together. And then she was just like, why are you being so cold with me? Why are you like, and I was just like, look, I can't, I actually just cannot talk with right now. Not only am I very busy, but also because I was doing risotto, you have to constantly monitor risotto. Um, and like, but also as well like you're clearly drunk and i'm not having this conversation with you while you're drunk it's just pointless it's just no and then she's like why are you being so cold and then she's like just just tell me that you don't just tell me that you hate me and i'm like i don't hate you i don't I, i'm just very confused right now oh, this is messy yeah and she's like just tell me that you hate me because it'd just be easier and i can just get over you and i'm just like i don't why are you getting it there's nothing to get over we we messaged for a month for a week and we slept together once like i don't really understand I'm so confused right now. I can't really process it. I need to go. And she was just like, and she was just like, okay, fine. I'll take, I'll take the hint. Like you hate me. And I hangs up. And I'm just like, what the fuck? And Sabrina pokes her head around. She's like, what the fuck? And I'm like, I don't know. She's like, what the fuck? <laughs> and then she literally blows up my phone all night. And to the point where, and like message me going, call me, call me. I like, I need to talk to you. Call me. And I just literally just turned my phone off. Cause I was just like, I cannot. I cannot deal with this. Um, and then, like, I get this message the next day, which I could have predicted, just basically this big, long essay of apology and remorse and, like, explanation and whatever. And I was just like, look, I'll talk to you when I get home. Anyway, we 
we met up and like she brought me these um roses and this apology card which was very sweet and she was like i'm really sorry and then she was like explaining that she was going through this whole thing and a lot of like change and she was just latching and all of that of it um and she apologized and like we're very kind of like chill now like we message every now and then but it's very like very chill but like there was but for these like you know however long i was just like i don't get what's happening yeah that's <laughs> you know yeah i was just like fucking crazy you know like i was but i was also kind of like was i that good was it you know, like, <laughs> um but no like it's obviously i mean obviously she was going through like a real tough time because they also have a couple of kids and a house and you know all of this kind of stuff and there was all these other but there were all of these other problems as well going on which i'm not going to talk about but um but like you know there was clearly just this build-up of like a shit storm waiting to happen and i think i was just the catalyst and then she just latched on to me and it was a whole thing but she's doing so much better now and like um i recommended her my old therapist and that's going really well apparently so oh good <laughs> um, good, good, yeah good. <laughs> yeah um and uh yeah and like she's doing a lot of stuff for herself like that's very productive and things and like focusing on what's best for the kids and all the rest of it and like her and her ex are now very amicable and and it's all fine but like yeah there was this period where I was just kind of like what have I got myself into (laughs) yeah like this is really nothing to do with me like I happen to be the, the the person this would have happened at some point or other though I am pretty sure like you know but it was just yeah I think she just like latched on to me because I was that person but yeah it was just absolutely bad shit I just I was just so confused the whole fucking time I was like t- talking to her and not, and not just that night as well but like there was just like a few messages that went back and forth and I'm like reading them just like I don't this doesn't make sense <laughs> you know yeah that oh man there is just nothing worse than dealing with you know somebody that's just losing their mind i mean or or just like gets so caught up in the situation or the drama or Mm -hmm. whatever Mm -hmm. that you're just like oh i can't i can't deal with this at all yeah because i wasn't like i wasn't aware of any kind of marital issues like it was for me the way that it was kind of told to me is that they wanted to just expand their like because they were quite sexually explorative anyway as a couple Mm -hmm. like um and like they just wanted to expand that out and she wanted to explore her bisexuality and like you know in a safe environment where she was with her husband and it was all very you know I didn't like but if I'd known that there were all these other issues before I probably wouldn't have got involved no matter how hot they are Mm. no 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 but like (laughs) I mean, it was so fucking attractive. But um, but like, you know, just been like, are you sure about this? Because like this is not a way to fix a relationship, like at all. Like it will do the opposite, you know. Um yeah. you know, but I had no idea. You know, you, it's not like you know, something that you really ask. I mean, although to be fair, I might do from now on um, if I end up in another situation like that. But like, I, I, you know, I'd not been in too many situations like that. Like, and the ones that I had been, like, they'd been, eat, well, one of them was more experienced. Like, they were like they'd done it before. It was fine. And then the other one, um, it wasn't like such an open relationship. It was more like he was open, but she was like fine. But like she had like lost her libido kind of thing so it was for him to because he's he's pretty polyamorous anyway and they were on about getting a third into it involved but then she just suddenly overnight lost her very otherwise very high sex drive so she was just like well you know as long as you're coming back to me at night right right right, right. Kind of thing. and they're the most solid fucking amazing and like me and him no longer bang anymore and like me and her are really good mates now and we all hang out and it's fucking hilarious like i remember like i had dinner around theirs and um we were having spaghetti bolognese and i was like slurping up the spaghetti because you do and um if you're eating it properly anyway and then he turns around <laughs> and he's just like oh i've heard that before um and then I turned around and I was just, just like, I was just like, yeah, it's about as fucking wide as you. And um, 
and we were all laughing and I was like, Do you know what's hilarious? There's not one person in this room that knows that that is not true. <laughs> 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 and it was just like, and it was just like such a surreal, but really in some weird kind of way, very kind of heartwarming <laughs> kind of thing. Like the two of them are just so comfortable and confident in their relationship and so loving and trustful and, res- and trusting and respectful of each other. Like you can make jokes like that and like, it's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'd say like me and her get on really, really well. Like in some ways we probably get on better than me and him just because me and her have so much in common. I mean, she's a supernatural fan for one thing. So, oh yeah. yeah. Well, already. Yeah. Already. Yeah. And a horror fan. So, um, but yeah, like, and like they came around last weekend and met my mum. Well, actually he had met my mum before and she's about ready to adopt him. I'm like, don't make it weird, mum. Don't fucking make it weird. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But like they came around and stuff and then she met my mum for the first time. We were at dinner together and like, you know, everyone knew the situation. My mum knew what what had been going on and, you know, but it was just like wholesome. Well, that's <laughs> what you're way. looking for is wholesomeness in your, you know, yeah. multiple partner been... setups. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I'd never been like, I I wasn't like, I guess, like long in the tooth enough to sort of like look out for those sorts of signs or like ask those kinds of questions or think that that would maybe but like I because to me that's not my business but actually if I start sleeping with you as a couple then maybe it is my business right yeah absolutely (laughs) yeah of course (laughs) like maybe I should I should be okay to ask those things like if it's one thing if they don't want to tell me but like I think if if that situation arises again I might just like hey how are you guys as a couple by the way yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) stable (laughs) um because yeah it can be very very messy um but yeah, have you ever been obsessed with someone? Oh God, yeah. Um, what, have you done some crazy shit? <gasps> have you done no, some crazy I'm, shit? Though? No, I mean, no. This this isn't crazy shit. But there was um, there was a uh, a girl, and this is like uh, college age. I would say mm-hmm. uh, I, I was. You know, like we both were. In fairness. Um, <laughs> This isn't like, well, she was college age and I was, this was last week. Um, (laughs) But yeah, but it, but it was like, well, um, it was the first, it wasn't my first girlfriend or anything. It was probably my second or third, Mm -hmm. like serious girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and she was so fucking cool. She was yeah. way cooler a girl than I needed to be dating. <laughs> you always tell yourself short. Man. But You're no, I awesome. mean, like, she was a drummer. Oh, okay, yeah, no, that's way too cool for right. you. Right, I mean, it was real, like, she was more, <laughs> she was too cool for most people I knew. Yeah, it, that's, yes. Um, But she was, like, she was super funny, and she was a, a drummer, and um, she had a really, like, very sly sense of humor and yeah i mean i just i like i i fancy her yeah i i mean i fucking loved her i was just immediately after we started dating i was like like over the moon yeah and um uh the yeah i mean at the end of the day like the the that age though you just did that puppy love kind of that first and you have the dumb teenage, not developed brain yet, so you just like everything seems like it's going to be forever. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, I mean that that was definitely part of it. Of like, oh well, we'll we'll be together, uh, f- uh, you know, for the rest of our lives. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and so yeah, it was a real bummer when when that you know ended up kind of going wrong. Yeah. Um, and it was huh, like that. The, the problem I had, uh, with that, I think is that I was it, like, again, it was the first person I'd, I'd been with that we were like that serious about. Mm. And, um, and, and I was that into, and yeah. And then kind of at the end of the day realized like, oh, I am uh, like, like, w- as as great as the relationship is and as into this person as as i am i was also like a real hot mess 
at the mm-hmm. time. And mm-hmm. so she wisely, let me just say, this is no reflection on, on her at all. She uh, was like, hey, you're kind of a fucking mess. <laughs> and so I am probably uh, not going to continue dating you. And uh, and she was right. She was right. I was a, a total fucking mess. Um, but it was still like a really a real bummer. And um, <laughs> so I, I'm so glad this is like 30 years ago now. So I can tell this story. Now it can be told. Um, right. So what happened was, uh, like, I I ended up seeing her, um, at like some bar or something with, and this is after she had already broken up with me. Yeah. And, how long after? Um, weeks, not that okay. long. Okay. Okay. And right. and so it, you know, look, uh, clearly it was going to be a situation where like she, I don't know that she started dating this guy before we broke up, but she would not have been wrong to <laughs> like, um, oh. but anyway, regardless, I run into her and, and this guy, or I just see him at the bar and, um, I was so pissed off about it. <laughs> that and i didn't like like we didn't get in a fight or anything like that but i Mm -hmm. did the real dick move of like i went over and introduced myself to him (gasps) oh yeah yeah right yeah i know i know i know (laughs) that person never looked good oh i know oh trust me i am aware (laughs) were you aware at the time uh I'm cringing out for you so bad right now. I know. No, it was it was fucking awful. Oh. Um and yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh it, yeah, at the end of the day, um it was like I, I like even as I'm telling you this now, like I feel terrible about this. This was one of the dumbest shittiest things that I I have ever engaged in. <laughs> of like oh i'm just i'm going to make an ass of myself just because i am i'm feeling hurt by this and so i will i'll show you um yeah oh it was fucking bad oh it was so bad uh but yeah oh i know i know it was oh it was so dumb Um, oh sorry okay no 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 that that story is over and as well it should be uh but yeah 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 and so i mean any any hope that i might have ever had oh, of patching yeah. things up was like that oh I, I torched it uh yeah at that in point. that moment yeah that flared off no oh, sure. again. Yeah, yeah yeah um well do you want to hear a, a story about when i was obsessed as a nine-year-old yes please so <coughs> i had this crush on this guy in the year above me at primary school mm-hmm. uh and i mean i can he's got such a fucking generic name and it was like you know 25 years ago i can say his name it's called sam brown it's important to the story okay <clears throat> so sam brown love of my life uh-huh sure Oops. at nine <laughs> he was 10 uh-huh. <laughs> we were gonna get married <laughs> yeah yeah and uh <laughs> I there's not many people who know this right so I this is you know back in the 90s so like we didn't have the internet not really we didn't we sure as hell didn't have social media or anything like that Mm -hmm. we didn't have mobile phones so you know we had to do the horrifically cringe thing of like calling the house phone yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember if you, this. If you wanted to speak to someone, you had to call the house phone and be on hold with their parents however the fuck long until your friend got on the phone and shit. Uh-huh. Anyway, so I wanted to be... I mean, this is just so on fucking brand for me. Like, like there was no, there was no... There was no moment in my life that made me the way I am. Apparently I was, as Gaga says, just fucking born this way. Mm -hmm. 
I decided I wanted to do some like gesture of love by sending him an anonymous secret admirer Valentine's Day card, right? Mm-hmm. So, as I said before, he has a very generic name, and I did not know where he lived. Mm-hmm. But I could not do it at school, no, no, because he could not possibly know who it was from, and it would have been very obvious who it was from had I handed it to him at school. And I couldn't just slip it in anywhere because we weren't in the same class. So it's not like I, would, I could go to his, like, drawer or something and just, like, crack it in, you know, because I didn't have access to his classroom. So I went through the phone book and called every single brown in the Bristol area, which is the fourth biggest city in, in England, until when the parents answered the phone and I said, hi, is Sam there? And they were like, Sam, hung up, knew I got the right one. Um, I then, to be on the safe side, because he, he had a younger brother called Jack, phoned up a different day that same number and asked for jack mm-hmm. just to make sure because sam is a pretty common name as is jack but to have sam and jack brown in both the same household is maybe unlikely so i went all through that to get his address i then every was i was i nine or was i eight because i did this for three years in a row I sent him Valentine's Day cards with poems inside. Oh, wow. And on the last year, oh, yeah, no, that was it. Because I did it, I did it even after he left school. Like he had moved on to secondary school and I was still in year six. And I remember it was that last year I stopped because his brother, the younger brother, Jack, came up to me and was like, you sending my brother Valentine's Day? I was like, no. Ugh. Oh, yes, no. Yes, it was me. <laughs> and I vehemently denied it, but it is weird because after that, the Valentine's Day card stopped. <laughs> mm. But yeah, I was I was proper obsessed by this guy. Like, I don't, I, I'm like all or nothing. Like, this is the thing with me. I'm either like, ew, don't touch me, or I'm like, <gasps> spit in my mouth. You know, like, <laughs> there's no in between. Um, so yeah. Um, Sam Brown broke my heart. Uh, fucking Sam Brown. Fucking Sam Brown. He's probably ugly now anyway. He had a bit of a pancake face. <laughs> oh, no. Like, That's he was unfortunate. Just, well, he, I mean, you know, you know, like, you know, like when you look back and you just, uh, you know, you're dumb, like younger teenage years and you're just kind of like, what the fuck was I obsessed with you? You know, <laughs> like, what, <laughs> why did you like, stand out to me over anybody else like yeah from what i remember he was just very kind of generic floppy head blonde head kind of lanky kid with just this very kind of like baby face mm-hmm. like that's literally all i remember him being and i've tried to look him up since just because like out of curiosity like i've done it for like several people like who i had crushes on at school and stuff and i can't find him anywhere or anyone who i think could be him so i've got no idea what he looks like now but He's probably ugly because he rejected me. That's what I like to believe anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, so that was my problem. That was probably my most neurotic, psychotic level of, at least that I can remember anyway. Like anything that I've acted out on anyway. I've definitely had like some pretty extreme emotions since mm-hmm. then. But like checked myself enough to not like really act on them so much although when my first proper boyfriend when I was like I was like 16 yeah 16 uh this was the one who um had a girlfriend but she was a lesbian and was in love with me and just using him as a cover-up for her sexuality I know I've definitely oh. spoken about this one yeah, um, yeah, yeah anyways he was my boyfriend for a bit and stuff but I was like obsessed like obsessed spent every single day with him and then and then like six months later or whatever he broke up with me because he said he needed space and i just did not understand what he meant by that sure it turns out when you spend every single second of your day that you're not at college or school with someone they can get a bit bored of you who fucking knew yeah um yeah exactly who knew who would have thought 
especially at the age of 17 and of being a boy. And yeah. sometimes he just wants to hang out with his mates without his girlfriend being there all the time. All the time. All the time. Every day. All the time. <laughs> and like, and um, well, I, remember, I remember one time, <laughs> I remember one time, like, we had this, like, like one of the mates the house that we always hung out in and they were on about moving to like across town um before they were walkable from my house Mm -hmm. whereas that would not have really been walkable like it would have been like i mean it would have been walkable but not what a 16 wants to do 16 year old sorry wants to do so um i remember he had come over my house and i was like talking with my mum like we were sat down all together and i was talking to my mum i was like so mum are you gonna be able to give me a lift every day and he was like every day and i was just like yes every day and he just like, and I was just like, I don't get it. What do you mean not every day? You don't want to see me every day? Why don't you want to see me every day? And like, I literally had no concept. I would literally be in class counting down the minutes until school ended so I could go around and see him. Like literally like full on blown obsessed. And then I wondered why he broke up with me because he needs space. But guess he came calling back two months later saying you missed me. So, yeah. So, well, so, and I assume at that point you just rubbed his face in it. No, I, um. I immediately said yes to getting back with him. Oh, oh sure. Um, <laughs> but then a couple of months later, we both broke up with each other. It was very amicable because I was just like, it's just not what it was, is it? And he was like, no. And I was like, all right, then see you later. <laughs> We're still mates now. We we're on uh, each other's Facebook and stuff. He is a wreck of a person. <laughs> well, I guess that's good, though, that you, you know, you have found some sort of peace, I guess. Oh, no, I'm still traumatized. Oh, okay. No, I'm fine. Um, uh, no, no. Especially seeing him deteriorate as a person, constantly doing night shifts at a, a fluorescent light supermarket for the last twenty years. Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah, he is a vampire. <laughs> um, but still, has a wicked sense of humor. Um, we were chatting for we met up actually a few years ago for drinks, and I was just like, oh, I'm really glad that I did not stay with you. <laughs> Didn't say that to him. Obviously, he'll never listen to this either. So it's fine. Yeah, right. Yeah, um, it's fine. But yeah, those are my main obsessions. Oh, and Josh Record at school as well. But I didn't really do anything psychotic. I was actually pretty chill about that. It's just, I just told everyone. Mm -hmm. But I didn't do anything. Like, I didn't do anything outrageous. I just, just the entire fucking year knew. But he was so nice. He was so nice to me. That's not why I fancied him. But it was just like, he could have been a real asshole and been like, oh, this bitch, you know, whatever. But he wasn't. He was always so nice to me. He sat next to me in design class and he was lovely. Hmm. Anyway, sorry. Mm. Uh, you know what? I mean, look, we're ending in a good place. We're ending with, with like a positive story, which is we good. are. Yeah. So, all right. So, uh, <laughs> going to some more crazy job people. Yeah, Tinder is, is the flesh. Yes. 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 Let's. Uh, uh, yeah. Let Let's Let's see what's out there. Uh, who Who can we get obsessed with? Oh wow, well, we got a we got a few people. So, David says ask me a question and i'll answer it please don't be mentally unstable bipolar or a troll with troll emoji Mm -hmm. seem to me everyone but normally sorry seem to me everyone but normal mentally stable people please just be normal and chatty what happened to normal chatty woman what happened to normal chatty woman yeah all right so i get you know maybe he's using the royal woman there or something (laughs) No, what normal chatty woman? I don't, uh, I don't get it. Yeah, yeah, but this is complete like prejudice against like things so many. I get like okay, I do get especially after our recent discussion. Mm-hmm. I do get not wanting someone who is like mentally unstable and stuff, but I just feel like I don't know. I just feel like the people who are mentally unstable nine times out of ten don't realize they're being mentally unstable. So putting it as part of your bio is unnecessary kind of useless and also puts people like me off because i'm just like you're just a bit of a prejudiced asshole Mm -hmm. and also i'm unstable so yeah (laughs) so all right so david is just going to be like like eh, i i kind of get where his head's at with some of this He's definitely speaking from experience. I mean, apart from the fact he said, seemed to me everyone, but, but like, he's, he's clearly had some trauma. I think, to be honest, I'm mostly just upset by his lack of grammar. 
Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That, I mean, that's the big problem, right? It's just yeah. that he's not, you know, he's done this. Seem to right. So no capitals. Um, oh no, there are. He put a capital U for unstable, but he doesn't know how to use commas at all. Um, when he's listing unstable bipolar, he didn't put a. This is me being so nitpicky, but he didn't put a space after the comma. And then when he said "seem to me everyone but," he put the space before the comma. Oh, that's not great. And then he ended it with a question mark, but he wasn't answering, asking a question. So, uh, okay, yeah, all it's right. So, now, yeah, it, that, I mean, that's not great. Um, what? Okay, so let's we'll put put him on the shelf for put now. Him and David, yeah. yeah. So, so now, um. Liam. Oh, I like the sound of this already. Right. <laughs> it is just lols. It is just funny. Um, can I eat? Right. So hang on. Wait. Do you know what froobs are? Do you have froobs in America? Froobs? Like... Yeah. They're like the yogurt in a in a plastic tube and you just kind of squish the yogurt out into your mouth. Uh, it's like a kid's thing. I, I mean, that sounds like gogurt. Probably. Yeah. Probably the similar okay. i don't know what that is I, sounds... yes i'm looking at uh yes i think it is a uk thing but yes i i am familiar with this as a concept right okay yeah you have yeah you have a variation over there okay yeah. great can i eat fruits off your boobs if yes swipe right i'm a dad i know still amazes me someone let me come in them and can land a backflip on a trampoline if I look familiar, it's because I'm in the man of your dreams. Just got a way smaller penis. I wish I was lying. <laughs> all, right, all, right, all right, sorry. Hit 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 me with that again, because I clearly lost. I like that seemed to go. There seemed to be a hard left turn there. <laughs> Can I eat froobs off your boobs? Okay. If yes, swipe right. I am a dad. I know. Still amazes me. Someone let me come inside them, and can oh land God. a backflip on a trampoline. That's what I look for in a partner. Uh -huh. if, if I look familiar, it's because I'm the man of your dreams, just got a way smaller penis. I wish I was lying. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, that None of that's great. Um, <laughs> uh, so, what... <laughs> What, 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 what's what's the picture look down. like? What like is he? Um, so oh, it's annoying because his location has kind of covered his face on the screenshot, but I'm pretty sure he is. I think he's black, and he's quite. Um, I say sporty looking. I mean sporty chav. So he's wearing like those clean white trainers with like the the straight, slightly baggy jeans. They're dark jeans. They are nice jeans, actually. It does actually you know if you like that style he actually is dressed quite well um and he's got like a white t-shirt with like what i call the granddad jacket mm -hmm. you know like the with like the little collar and it's like got a zip up and it's like that kind of granddad jacket <laughs> okay okay and it's like a sort of a tan color and he's wearing a baseball cap with some sort of motif on it and i can't see what it is um but yeah, he's got some yeah some white clean lace up sneakers, blue jeans, white t shirt, tan jacket, baseball cap, and he's six one. All right, um... and he's just sort of standing quite like he's got like a bit of a a power stance going on in his like feet, and then he's got his hands in his pockets, like of his jacket pocket. Okay. Okay. And he's just sort of looking down the camera in his back garden, like, yeah, what? <laughs> Is that Christmas? Because they got Christmas decorations up in the window. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's rough. <laughs> Uh, all right, so what uh, what what does our third one look like if that's number two? Usually the third one's always the worst. <laughs> yeah. So... This guy called Bobby. Mm -hmm. 
COVID-19 quote-unquote vaccine was an intelligence test to see how many people would shorten their lives to help the rest of us manage our numbers. If you took that, then you definitely won't like me. So just keep shopping for your beta males. There's plenty of them on here and they'll be delighted to chat to a sheep woman like you. Uh, well, you know, chic is always nice. No, uh, sheep. Sheep. A sheep woman. A sheep woman? Yeah. Oh, that's totally different than what I heard. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. I mean, ugh, all of this is just terrible. Um. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, I still don't know which one I like best. I mean, I look, da- David, our our first guy. Yeah, is he's fun. I mean, yes, the grammar's bad. It's it's a little bit incelish yeah it's quite insensitive yeah it's not yeah that is not great um but especially as someone who has got a mental disorder that to me is a bit of a red flag sure sure like l- look i <laughs> look i'm not trying to defend this guy um but in terms of what we're dealing with here oh yeah no on a spectrum yeah spectrum <laughs> sure um, <clears throat> yeah yeah, I mean, the, uh, all things being equal, this is better than most. Yeah. Um, He's got quite a nice little smiley beardy face. Okay, and well. he likes watching films. Yeah, I mean, I, again, I'm not I'm not crazy about any of this. No, none of it's good. I mean, we, I think we go into this knowing none of it is good. Right. We're not trying to say that this guy is someone you want to date necessarily, but just if you had to. Right. If if if, <sighs> if you gotta, th- this is this is where we mm. land. Mm. Um. Okay, and then it's really like who is the worst between two and three? I might, I might say it's number two in this case. Uh, with all the out two or three. Uh, I mean, the froobs on the boobs, and do you can you believe somebody let me come in them? Like, look. That just reeks of low class to me. You know, like I both of them are terrible. You don't want anything to do with any of these people. But <laughs> between two and three, that's the thing. Wait, like, I am just thinking this is um I uh, I I I think that I yeah, it's got it yes, absolutely. Yes, I'm I'm going all in on this. Oh, I think on. yeah. Number okay. 2 is the worst. The more I think about it, the more I, I Really? I, I, yes. Okay. Yes. What what do you do you, are are you saying that our third option is Yes. Why so? What it, what it, what is it about number 3? Like again, because don't... it's just that rigidity of like narrow like not even being open to a discussion. He's just like, "No, nah, like if you took a vaccine, you're immediately trash, you know. Like, and yeah. Also, he's an investment manager. Mm. But um, the middle guy, he is not my top. He is my second because at least he's. He, I don't know. First off, his grammar is actually like is not too bad. Okay. Okay. Um. Firstly, secondly, is. He sounds like he's just got a bit of a sense of humor <laughs> and he's self-deprecating which i always appreciate like not because i want some like meek submissive guy which i do not but just being able to like poke fun and like you know have some bants and stuff with mm-hmm. the thing that gets me is that if he is true about the smaller penis i'm sorry i'm a size queen yeah i can't I, I can't you know like so if he hadn't said that he'd probably be my top is that really bad <laughs> But he seems like, you know, sexually adventurous. He wants to eat foobs off on boobs. I've never been asked that before. You know, and like, he's a dad, so we've got things in common. Not that I'm a dad, but, we, you know, parents. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, I sure as hell can't land a backflip on the trampoline. Oh, today, I went to an air hop. Do you know what that is? They have that over there? Uh, uh, describe it. I, it it's just like a big kid's indoor thing filled with trampolines and different type of, like bouncy stuff and oh okay like, yeah sure, sure, sure. Shit. it was a birthday party that we went to and i figured but a bunch of moms 
kids can go off kids are being taken around by the people who work there we'll just sit and have a coffee and have a natter right I turn up and they're like oh get your socks and I'm like I'm sorry you fucking what and like <laughs> and they were like getting involved and like well they didn't after a bit because one of them literally told me that she felt like she was gonna wet herself every time she bounced on it <laughs> she was like my cervix is not what it what it used to be I was like, oh. <laughs> my <laughs> cervix isn't what it used to be is yeah. the bumper sticker I have on my car <laughs> right well, I was just like she's like yeah get yourself so I was just like no I was like I did not wear the bra or top for this absolutely not I will hold your bags you know like <laughs> oh yeah so I absolutely could not land a backflip on a trampoline so he's got that one up on me yeah honestly like in terms of I mean you know I'm not swiping right on this guy even if he did say he's the biggest dick in the world but like on a spectrum Mm-hmm. This guy's like, I'm getting a vibe off this guy. Then first one, David, because oh, the asshole in me would like to like claim that I'm completely normal and then just completely ADHD out in front of him. Just to be a prick. Okay. And then Bobby, I just can't deal with anyone who is just like, I'm not saying, you know, that everything is very black and white. But mm-hmm. this guy seems to be thinking that it's very black and white. And I need to be able to have like chat with someone. Like if we disagree on something, there needs to be room for a discussion or like at least like a good healthy debate. Whereas this guy just sort of seems like one of those people which are just like so rooted in their belief that they can even have like a healthy discussion about it. Not necessarily to change each other's minds, but just be able to have like that healthy conversation mm-hmm. do you know what i mean yeah 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 Yeah. where i just feel like i just feel like mate you're just such, such a fucking tool and then he'd just be there going you're such a fucking sheeple and i'll be like fuck off mate and he'll be like fuck off mate and he'll be like right fuck you then bye and that's literally how that would go <laughs> well that seems harsh he set up the tone yeah 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 so i don't want to this is what i mean i'm just i'll just step away from that situation entirely like i don't want none of that tone I don't need that negativity in my life. <laughs> Whereas David, at least I can have a bit of fun with him. And Liam, I might get fruits eaten off my boobs. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, hot. yeah. Fucking great. I mean, well, at the end of the day, right, you get you at least are leaving with a snack. <laughs> yeah. Even if he's not got much to snack on, he brings fruits. Well, yeah. He knows his strengths. I uh, I just, <laughs> I, I, I really hate the can you believe can you believe that that somebody let me come inside them i just there i (laughs) just hate it i just hate it um uh, that strikes me as just being the absolute worst in terms of i mean it's just it's rude and it's like off the back of him being like yeah i'm a dad and like so he's kind of in a way inadvertently talking about his kid like yeah right 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 (laughs) someone let me come in i come inside them and like produce that come origin i yeah (laughs) you know i mean i it would be like if uh you know i had a tinder profile that was like all about how uh you know like i can't believe anyone has ever accepted my semen in any of their orifices no, you just sound like a psychopath. Well, yeah, I, that's the point I'm trying to make. You're right. A hundred percent correct. It, you sound like a psychopath. Because of the terminology you're using. You sound so clinical. <laughs> yeah, right. But I mean, I don't think it's substantially better if you're using, you know, uh, uh, like more slang. I think it's still awful. Uh, yeah right uh, anyway i look it you know that's so funny it just it just blows my mind i can't I believe ejaculated the semen into your orifices look yeah hey look who doesn't like i would <laughs> who, you know look uh when you are ejaculating into people's orifices <laughs> yeah. then i you know look that's just a good time everybody's having a good time 
Uh, no, you, think, you assume so. You would think. Hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. And I mean, look, I, assuming it's all consensual and uh, you're not surprising anybody with it and so forth. No, and also you're just good at it. Um, it's more what I meant, not like. <laughs> I just meant like that you have skill at least, not like it was it wasn't consensual. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, that you have some. Yeah, like yeah, that you're you're actually moving your hips some. Yeah. Uh, that it's not just. You know, I'm going, I, uh, I, I can't remember where I picked this up or who said it first, but there is a difference between having sex with someone and then just masturbating into someone. Oh, that's good. You know, and a a lot of guys do the latter and, you Mm -hmm. know, you gotta, you gotta make sure that everybody's, everybody's there and having a good time. That's my motto. Like who's, who's, uh, like. You know, let, like let's make sure that every all parties are uh, enjoying themselves because otherwise, otherwise, what's the point? Yeah, hundred percent. Like, are you gonna feel good about it afterwards if knowing that the other person isn't? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like, right. you know, like my. I mean, I'm a very in bed anyway. I'm a very egotistical, competitive person. Really? So, like, yes. Wait, are you shocked? Wait, is that shocking? I mean, I, competitive. Sport? I just never thought of it as like, oh, it's a sport. <laughs> no, like one time someone said that I was like the second best blowjob he'd ever had. Uh-huh. I was like, are you fucking kidding? And like, proved him wrong. Hmm. But that's all you have to say is that I'm not the best you've ever had. And I will be like, you fucking what? Fucking get back in there. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. Like, all right. So I was with one of, I'm going to say nameless, um, but one of the properly open E&M, like ethical non-monogamous kind of situations I was in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the guy <laughs> stopped himself from almost saying that i was better than his girlfriend oh wow that's pretty good <laughs> yeah i was just like what and he was like nothing and i was like uh-huh and he was just like no like you're like the second best and i was just like mm-hmm. i was like your girlfriend gets fast the only time they get a pass for that is when it's their is when it's their partner because i'm like well it's just a bit mean to try and be better but like he said um but yeah he was just like oh, I, he's like, i think that's the best second best <laughs> and i was just like oh <laughs> so i was quite tough at that <laughs> but yeah i get like quite competitive in that so like yeah like i need to know that you have had a really good time sure yeah but when like, I, I need to have had a good time too yeah well yeah i don't yeah, think yeah. you really could have had a good time without you both at least meeting in the middle somewhere but like the worst thing, unless it's one of those situations where I actually can't move because mm. either you're just like, like I was fucking this guy who was like ex army, ex rugby, fucking a tank of a guy. Like it was quite intimidating. Um, and I just could not move, just physically could not move because of the oh, weight wow. of him. Um, <clears throat> or if you're just so like restrained such that you just can't move, right? Unless you're in like a situation like that, like the worst thing that I can ever think of as being one of those people that just lie there. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, like it needs to be like a two way symbiotic yeah. experience. Uh, yeah, I've definitely dated uh, some people that, uh, one in particular, when I think about that, there is one person in particular I think of that was like, she really just did not participate in a way and you know mm-hmm. maybe that was my fault but uh maybe may, maybe i did not inspire her or something <laughs> but uh oh yeah like that yeah i'm not saying that's the situation here but like the only times where i have been that where it's been like you were giving me nothing to work with like and i'm just like just get it done like that's the only time i've ever just been like not participating <laughs> much yeah i mean yeah just get it done 
That is. Yeah, that's not why the thing is to happen there, though. I don't know what yeah. happened. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. That's not where you want to be. No, that's uh, not. All right. Well, <laughs> I feel we high, and now we're we're on a downer again. No, 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 no. But I I feel like we have uh, successfully navigated uh, once more the um uh uh the the ins and outs the the foibles of of love obsession obsession la passion la, la passion um yeah yeah for sure i think that um look obsession is is rough like sometimes it can be kind of decent like you you know your last story of obsession was mostly fine um so that's you know <laughs> something but uh yeah it can it can definitely get out of hand it's it's definitely one of those things that like man in uh if you are not careful yeah uh, I, then obsession could could really become just uh, you know the the worst thing in your life yeah uh, but also i just don't think that i mean i think when you actually get into levels where it's obsession it just never ends well because even if you're obsessed with each other it's always some sort of like bonnie and clyde type fucking natural born killer sort of you know thing not that i'm saying everyone who's obsessed with each other turns criminal mm -hmm. but just like it it burns out there's got to be there's some sort of destruction there like in some way shape or form it's gonna it can't last and it can't it's it's going to be destructive because to be that like you know what what um wrapped up um in someone else like that to the point where it's obsession and it's like goes beyond your own needs and your own kind of wants in life like and the other person's doing the same thing they're putting everything into that other person mm -hmm. like that's just that can never be good no, no, no. You know, I think the moral of the story kind of is you just have to be able to maintain yourself and your own needs and your own, you know, just like, the, like you you just got to keep a head on your shoulders yeah. and, and understand that, like, just because you are deep into someone doesn't mean that the same is going to be true. You know, like you've got to. No. You've, you've got to allow for someone to just have their own life and, and understand that maybe they are not into you the way that you are into them. And that's yeah. fine. Like that just, that shit happens. That's just life. And be able to have saucy corset photo shoots with the best friend. Will they, won't they? <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't just let me be free. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Why on earth would you want to uh, close the barn door? And yeah. uh, you know what? I'm trying to think of the how does the like the the rest of that go? Um, you know, I haven't heard that before. <laughs> like well, uh, you know, you like you want to be free. You want to be able to run free. Oh right, yeah. You know, yeah. that's where I was headed with it. But it was just don't, a, like yeah, don't close the barn door. Not barn door on me. I am not a cow. <laughs> I am a wild beast exactly you are you are a wild beast an animal just waiting uh to, to for to be set loose on the world yeah or something something uh but anyway um next time we won't be talking about obsession we'll probably talk about uh something else but what ne uh, well, actually next month is february it's valentine valentine so we'll have to talk about love love i'm a birthday Oh yeah, yeah. So, what are you gonna be? Twenty three, twenty four. Yeah, sure. All right. You know, thirty six, mate. Eh, thirty six ain't bad. Thirty six is oh. in your prime. It's not bad. I got ID for alcohol the other day as well. Under twenty five. Yeah, well, but you've got a pretty young look. Yeah, I do. It's because I fucking dress like a teenager still. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, 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 not specifically about that, but like you know being being someone who is uh young looking like you've got a face that you could be 24 or you could be 35 you know oh, i'll uh, take it yeah, yeah yeah i mean no that is look it is that's not a complaint 
you know, I, if it weren't, honestly, if it were not for the gray of my hair at this point, I could probably still get away. Like somebody was surprised, uh, when I told him I was 50. Yeah, that does it. Yeah. It, if I didn't already know it, like that would surprise me also. Yeah. Cause yeah. I, got, I got the baby face. I got, you know, I, I look, I can't, I can't stop these good looks. You can't. <laughs> no, should you? Yeah, look, it's a juggernaut. You get on board or you get out of the way. That's just the. Damn only... right, but you shouldn't be restrained. Mm-mm. I, you, look, you, sometimes you got to throw the barn door open. <laughs> as as many important people have noted. <laughs> All right. Uh, look, this show is almost two and a half hours long. We're gonna get out of here. Oof. Um, and uh, look, thanks for joining us, uh, Kate. Where can people find more of you? Uh, well, um, there's Eternal Darkness of Not So Spotless Minds, which I do with my co-host Matt, and we do reviews of movies from pre two thousands and another one from post two thousands, and talk shenanigans and bullshit and that, just shoot the shit. We also have lately, occasionally done a few interviews. Mm-hmm. There's one recently with Jenna Canal, Star of Terrifier, and the upcoming Faceless After Dark, which if you haven't seen yet, check it out. It's fucking awesome. Um, and then we also did The Adams Family of DP Dig and Hellbender fame and uh, chat to them about their new film called Where the Devil Roams, which is on Tubi now um, and is fucking sick. If, um, yeah, again, if you haven't checked it out, do so. Um, and then, yeah, hopefully we've got some exciting stuff coming up. We might be moving over to YouTube if we can get our tech in gear. When I say our tech, I mean Matt's laptop has been broken for the last six months. <laughs> um, but, yeah, uh, so that's really cool. And then, yeah, as I said at the beginning, I've got an upcoming show called Kate Anjou's Book Reviews, which, again, will hopefully be on YouTube, but it will also be in your usual download places as an audio podcast. Uh, so, yeah, that's about it, really. Awesome. Uh, All right, everybody, Uh, you can listen to more of me on The Dark Parade. Uh, Also, uh, starting as of the time you hear this, uh, about the same time, um, over on Duncan and Bo Come Correct, we will be doing um, a return as True Detective Returns. We're going to be... Oh my god, I'm so excited. We're going to be talking about True Detective. I'm actually more excited about Duncan and Bo Come Correct doing detective i am and that's not to say i'm not excited about true detective because i am really excited about it but i love you guys chatting about it it's I going to be very fun it. i'm i I'm yes so excited. i'm i i am as well um i'm i'm excited and the, also it's being developed by Issa lopez from uh tigers are not afraid really yeah sick i did not know that that's yeah. fucking awesome right like th- everything on paper and we know how well that goes uh based on the conversation we've had but everything on paper for this sounds like it is going to be exactly the true detective that we want i just feel if they've taken a break after this time they're only going to come back with something awesome I, it sure seems like it right especially given like the critique it's had for seasons especially season three you know, like it needs to become it needs to be coming back more like I mean, I still love seasons two and three. I don't I think they're great, but like season one true detective is just mwah. and it needs to be not necessarily okay, season one true detective is top top tier. Yeah, yeah. But like if it can just be like even if it's just like skirting its tails a little bit, like that sort of then I'll be happy. Yeah, as long as it's in the ballpark of, and I really enjoyed season three a whole lot as well. I really enjoy season three, but I feel like they're not going to, given the critique of like the criticism that season three especially got, I don't think that they're going to come back unless it's like nearer on par with season one. I just don't think they would. Uh, Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think it's going to be, I hope, I think it's going to be good. Um, yeah, and uh, the early reviews have been very good as well, and yeah, yeah just I, like everything about it. I'm hey, it's tomorrow night, you know. I get to I get to see new True Detective with Jodie fucking Foster. I know, and she's not going to come on to something unless it's good. That's that. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking as well. Yeah, and so, yeah, she doesn't need to. She's fucking. She's doing loads of shit. She doesn't need to do it unless it's good. Yeah. So I'm yes, I'm very excited about all of this, um, yeah. and yeah, so th- that'll probably drop uh, a week after this will drop 
as we're recording this a week from today mm-hmm. and then the first true detective episode will drop a week after that so um yes so keep an eye out for duck and bow come correct that'll be back and kate as always thank you so much for doing this oh of course i love it thank you so much for for being a fantastic co-host and for leaving the barn door open leaving the barn door open and <laughs> and uh yeah and we'll be back in a month with more uh heart of war so see you then yeah bye bye